Okay, well, we'll uh, start up here with this game. So, uh, we'll just kind of let the intro play out. So this is a game called, uh, this is a game by Legend Entertainment. Uh, they were actually a big publisher of games back in the day, back in the, kind of the, I would say the mid-90s. They did a lot of uh, text-based adventures and some, some graphical adventures. Um, so this is Frederick Falls Gateway. So, yeah, in the year 2077, the plot of Venus was a new frontier for an overcrowded, exhausted, and nearly desperate Earth. Named for the Roman goddess of love and beauty, this hostile world was no paradise. Colonists and explorers had to adapt to average temperatures of 900 degrees, a surface pressure of 94 atmospheres, and blah blah blah. I didn't get a chance to finish it all. The real reason for mankind's interest in Venus lay beneath the howling windstorms and acid clouds. Under the planet's jagged, parched, and hellishly hot surface, a buried secret that held seemingly infinite promise. Someone had come and gone before humans set foot on Venus. The planet was crisscrossed with tunnels carved out of the crust 500,000 years ago by a long-vanished high-technology civilization. The vanished aliens were a source of intense curiosity and hope for the 20 billion inhabitants of Earth. Wave after wave of explorers descended into the alien tunnels in search of advanced technology that might have been left behind by the so-called Hichi. That's what they call them. Most of the artifacts discovered on Venus had no practical use and were low, little more than curiosities. The Heechee had cleaned out most of the useful technology, or so it seemed until a crotchety old tunnel explorer named Sylvester Macklin found a fully functional Heechee spacecraft in a sealed off tunnel. Instead of reporting his find to the authorities, Macklin decided to try and figure out how to make the strange ship work. He climbed inside and began fiddling with the controls. Yes, folks, instead of, go instead of reporting your stuff, <laughs> Just fiddle with it. Eventually, Macklin found the right button. Rocket engines ignited, and the ancient ship climbed out of the boiling atmosphere of Venus on a plume of white fire. As soon as the ship was cleared of the planet, the thrusters stopped, and the ship disappeared into what we now know is Tau space. Basically, light speed. Or faster, I don't know. That's generally, I think it's light speed. When the ship returned to normal space, Macklin was delighted to find that he was still in Earth's solar system. He was even more delighted to find himself docking with an immense Heechee artifact, a huge space station circling the sun between Venus and Mercury. So we have the technology to go to Venus, but we don't see this? Huh. Macklin's ship parked itself inside a hangar filled with other ships of similar construction. Macklin left his ship and explored a sensational new find with a sense of awe and anticipation. The bad news was that Macklin couldn't reset his guidance system of his ship and get it to go anywhere. He was stuck without food or water. He wrestled desperately with the controls and as he became more and more hungry and thirsty. Towards the end, Macklin knew he wasn't going to go home. He redirected his efforts to a new goal. Macklin decided that if he couldn't go back, he could at least signal his discovery to humanity. His death wouldn't be in vain. Macklin figured out how to detonate the fuel cells in his ship. The resulting flash was sighted by NASA and a mission was sent out to explore. The NASA mission arrived at the Heechee artifact and found hundreds of working faster than light Heechee starships, a priceless treasure trove that made the Heechee space station humanity's gateway to the stars. Thus, the alien starship parking garage earned its name, Gateway. After a series of military confrontations and a narrowly averted war, the governments of the major powers on Earth realized that Gateway was too valuable to be given to any one government. The governments agreed to establish a multinational corporation called Gateway Enterprises, often referred to as the Corporation, that would occupy Gateway and exploit the technology of the Hiji. The faster-than-light starships on Gateway are now used for a new form of high-tech prospecting. Human volunteers ride the alien ships in the hope that they will visit other worlds and bring back Hiji machines, tools, and other potentially useful items. Because human scientists still don't know how the ship's guidance systems work, the destinations of these prospecting missions are unknown. <laughs> we don't know how it works, but go ahead, just jump on in, go hit a button and go somewhere, Let's see what happens. <laughs> that sounds about right for us. And there you go, off into faster than light, into light speed. For obvious reasons, these missions carry an extraordinary degree of risk. 15% of prospector missions don't come back, and 80% return with little or nothing. The remaining 5% make the risks worthwhile and can turn ordinary people into instant millionaires.
You won the local lottery on December 23rd, 2101. The prize was a one-way ticket to Gateway worth $238,575, including a limited partnership in Gateway Enterprises, transportation to Gateway, 10 days worth of life support on Gateway itself, a class in Hechi ship handling, and an invitation to go on a mission a week after you've uh, uh, done it. A week after you turn your winning lottery ticket, you board an interplanetary ship traveling from Earth to Gateway. It is now Wednesday, May 17, 2102, and you have been aboard Gateway for less than a day. You have been assigned living quarters and a proctor to show you around and get you settled in. Your first ship handling class starts later today. You are about to become a Gateway Prospector. So yes, this game is all about you are a guy who just or a person. It does, like they, I think they imply that you're a guy, you're male, but I, but I'm of a mind that you could be either or. It could, like you, like the game actually does depict you, I believe, as male. When it does depict you, it doesn't in this game. It actually does it in the other game, to my understanding. I I may not be a hundred percent certain. Uh, however, yeah, basically, yeah. The whole premise of this game is that you won a lottery, and that lot the lottery winnings was you get to leave you get to leave Earth and go to Gateway, and you get to try to you get to try to make you, you got ten days to strike it rich. Little weird, a little like little blase, isn't it? We'll get into the story a little bit later. Let's go ahead. So I have saved games. So like, if you have any saved games on here, ask you if you want to restore. I'm just gonna say no. We're just gonna go right into the game. So part one, Gateway Prospector. This is right after you make it. So you're here. Your room is a Spartan cubicle furnished with a desk, a chair, a wall locker, and a fold-down bed. The only decorative touches are a sickly-looking plant sitting next to the desk and a lonely picture of Earth adorning the far wall. A PV comm set is set to the south wall. Above the PV is a vent. To the east is a door that leads outside. You notice that the desk has one drawer which is closed. On the desk, you see a debit card. The message light on the PV comm set is blinking. And now we are in the game. So this, this, is, this is actually a, like, this is, I would call this a point-and-click uh, adventure game. Uh, so you can actually click on the different things in the room and see stuff. Um, you can actually use the keywords. So there's actually like the, so up here is a list of common keywords. And then further down underneath this line, there's all sorts of additional keywords that you can use. And I like if you, and on the, so like you can use any of those keywords. Uh, some of them like save, restore, restart, quit. You can do all that. Um, and the next screen here is a list of your inventory so or i won't say it's inventory this is not just your inventory this is a list of all of the items in the room everything that is interactable uh, in the room uh including the area like the whole name of the area i actually don't want that uh, you can do all uh, and one thing to point out is that this game does interpret what you what you tell it. So, like, if you tell it to read the picture, it's probably not going to do anything. I'm going to read picture. And, it, okay, so in this case, read picture on the far walls, page torn out of magazines, full-color reproduction of oil painting depicting the Earth, seen from one of the high Pentagon defense satellites. The picture's taped to the wall. I'm not going to bother taking it. So this thing is blinking. It probably wants my attention. Let's, uh, let's check it out. So we read the PV comm set, you take your debit card. So sometimes if you, if there's something you need to do before and it's just obvious, it'll do it for you sometimes. So take a debit card first. You notice here, my score has just gone up by two. This, this game does have a point system and, it, oh shoot, I just realized that the, give me a moment, I'm gonna actually do something here. Looks like the game, I apologize for that. Uh, the game itself, actually, uh, I'm going to have to make sure that's fixed, like, fixed later. Okay. So, well, I guess I will go through a little bit more of what you can see as we go. Apparently, half the uh, thing was uh, not showing. So, we'll come over here. And, so, now we're on the Nippon American Telephone and Telegraph, the n at and <laughs> Apparently, apparently, AT and T merged with some company in Japan, and now we have we have that team. Okay, so this is the Gateway Comnet. This is where you can go. Um, you got play new messages. You can review any stored messages. Your Gateway account status, current events, bulletin board, and classifieds. You can place a call, and you can end your session. So, 
Uh, just to be frank, um, the review stored messages, that's only if you really, really want to. They're probably, there's almost no reason to ever go back and review your messages unless you somehow miss something. Um, the gateway account status makes sense. This is actually your, your bank account balance. This is how much you have. So right now I have $1,500 in credit. And I have not made any purchases, so I have no debits, and so my account balance is $1,500. That's only important for the early part of the game. The later part of the game, your money's going to mean nothing. Just going to put it out flat out right there. Um, current events from Earth Comnet, that's just a little bit of background, a little bit of story. So like you can find out like the hill, there's, a, there's a fire in Keller's Hill uh, in, Wy in Wyoming that's, uh, that's, that's been controlled. Um, go to next uh the l5 space lab suffered a catastrophe so apparently uh, a resupply shuttle when docking uh slammed into a space lab and damaged it severely um the main cylinder comp suffered complete atmosphere loss uh after a drunk pilot collided with it and opened it to space uh seven lab crew members were injured the shuttle was destroyed and the pilot was rescued. The pilot was not harmed in the crash, but somehow got a broken jar on it in the rescue efforts. And he's now being sent back to Earth to face trial of criminal negligence. Uh, yeah, the dude's drunk flying a spaceship. That fits along with with standard common events. Uh, the U new U.S. currency produces smiles in any town USA. And apparently there's a new U.S. currency, the New Dollars, in, that was issued started to be issued in 2100 that's a new hit um they basically just dropped three basically what they did is they just dropped three zeros they just dropped three zeros off the price off of everything and everyone's like hey it's great that i can buy a loaf of bread for three bucks instead of three thousand dollars um dollars just seemed like funny money before and they hailed the the tradition the treasurer's decision to keep the name dollar instead of credit or NCU, which was favored by some. But yes, apparently we got the, like the, the inflation we're seeing now has been inflate, get, goes up by 2,100 and suddenly a loaf of bread is costing you $3,000. So they just introduced a new currency that, where that where basically one of this new dollar is worth a thousand of the old dollars. Fine with me, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, the next one, uh, the, the Liberian Satellite Network nuclear blast kills 50,000 in Burkina Faso. Uh, they det Someone detonated a, a nuke. <laughs> How nice. Uh, micro machines cripple synth oil refineries. So Exxon apparently is still around in 2100. Uh, that academic for micro machines uh, stop stuff. Um, the Gateway Corporation held a press conference. How nice. It's a, his, it's a Hichi device unique in the history of Gateway. It looks like a toaster oven with no door and a reflective coating on the inside. They've not really sure. They're not really sure what it does, but they know they they they're they're pretty sure it's some kind of self power center or recording device. Um, the device is on temporary display at the Gateway on board museum on level dog. Full students rewarded advance on royalties of two and a half million dollars. So keep keep that in mind. That that's the kind of royalties you see if you complete good missions. Um, there was a Trans-Siberian Maglev, so they used Maglev trains, which is basically mag magnetic levitation. Um, basically the, new, the next level of uh, bullet train. Uh, you got the Rainforest Park boundaries. And just different, different because, hey, there's Crazy Dave talk. Crazy Dave! <laughs> Star Trek 30. And they're and they're looking to try for you know, Star Trek 31 and counter on blank. <laughs> Oh yeah, and Para Pictures is now Para Pictures is international instead of Paramount. So yeah, these are just silly, silly things. <laughs> yeah, apparently uh, the Mormon data banks in the mountain were uh, damaged. <laughs> And we just kind of go through. Hey, it looks like in 2100, they finally reclaimed Chernobyl. They finally removed the last traces to the, of the melted reactor core at Chernobyl. Holy cow. It took them a hundred and some odd years. <laughs> so yeah, these are just very interesting little, little, that, that's, this is the last one. This is another, another Quake Rock San Francisco. I don't, I don't know. All right. 
we've played around here enough. Let's go to the new messages and read it. So you get a so you get a message from this guy named Hector Gomez. He's actually a dude in chart, like at Gateway. So classes on Hichi ship handling held daily at fifteen hundred hours. So basically three o'clock in the afternoon. Then you go through military time on Gateway, and the in game clock will represent that. Um, he just tells you how to get it, all that stuff. Um, the next one, Tom Seldridge, he's actually your proctor. He's just like, hey, uh, come to the bar at 8 o'clock and eight o'clock tonight, and I'll buy you a drink. Um, and if you miss him, he's like, nah, don't worry. You'll, I'm there every night. Just show up about that time. I'll be there. Um, we'll make sure not to miss him the first night. And then Terry Nielsen, she's actually your representative. She's the, she's the person you'll be, you'll be talking to. Um, she's like, ah, if we, we might never meet, but she, I'm your official point of contact, just in case. Uh, and that, this is your last message. And once you finish, you just go ahead and close it because there's not very much else to do in here. Uh, I'm going to open it up, take, take all. So I take the book and then I need to read the book. And you notice that it's like everything we know about the Hichi. You open it up and it's blank. You turn the page, it's blank. It's blank. And then you flip to the book and it turns out that all the pages are blank. And he basically says, you know, this is just a this is just a joke. Just give us give this to the secretary in the in the headquarters, and she'll give you the real thing. <laughs> it's just a it's just a gag he, he does. So now we'll go outside of the Hichi town, and there's something going on. I'm actually gonna go here. You know, there's a desk and receptionist. Uh, like you know, I'm gonna give her the give book to receptionist. She has a she gives the book. She looks through it, laughs a little bit, puts it away, gives her the real, gives you the real thing. Five points. Um, you now you can. So one thing to point out: this is actually the compass rows that you see here. This is the uh, directions. Any direction that's not uh, out is just uh, go like you can't go that direction. Uh, you can also go upstairs. You can go in buildings, out of buildings. Uh, sometimes you use it. There are keyboard shortcuts. I will be using some of them sometimes. So like I can do. So actually, in this case, I'm not going to use keyboard shortcuts in that case. Yeah, it looks like I'm not going to use keyboard shortcuts. They normally, uh, they do normally, uh, but not right now. So, you know what, it is 1230. You know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go do something here. So, hey, we got a platter tray here. Uh, you take, so I'll take the rose. Got, I mean, it's nice to have. So, you notice this is where they, like, do stuff. Now, I'm going to do something that is normally done later in the game. This is just kind of done for, like, this is kind of a speedrunner's trick. But I'm going to pull the handle. I'm going to pull the emergency lever. And I turn it off. And we wait and wait for it and everything. My scores come up with five. I wait. And this old guy in a maintenance uniform shows up and gives you some tools. Hands you the toolbox and says, make yourself useful. And hold this. Then he's like, takes it, gives a key, opens it up, looks at you, gives you the key. Put this in the box. Well, I need this key, so I'm gonna put the key in the planter tray. And so it's in there. It's in there. He picks up the screwdriver, pokes the machine. Uh, he's talking about like, oh, if like plants are gonna die if you don't do it. You just kind of wait. Then he looks at it, squints it, tells you, hey, you look like some. He's, you look like a famous dude. And he starts telling you about this guy named Rolf Becker, who uh, his first mission. He first mission. He comes out. And finds a new, finds a Hichi metal, piece, some Hichi metal 70 feet under frozen methane, and makes money off it. Makes, makes back. Used chemical rockets on a ship, plastic crater, got a supply dump, gave him a cool million just for that. Uh, you know, I'm going to put the screwdriver. So he actually hands you his tools. Uh, you can be nice, put the screwdriver in the toolbox. And he hands you the wrench, put there, uh, put wrench in toolbox. You don't have to do this. This is just something you can do. But then he talks about, like, oh yeah, he just he, he, he goes on a second mission that, come, that comes back and gets married to a hot, to uh, the, like the basically a, a hot uh, hot rich rich girl. And then he picks some pliers, starts wrestling the pipe fitting. Uh, should have stopped there. He pushed his luck and didn't come back. Um, and he's like, man, everything starts getting stripped from so many restarts. I don't know he keeps doing this, but I'm gonna catch him. He's like, if you weren't new, I'd be suspecting you, but this has been going on for weeks. So apparently what you've been doing has been going on for weeks. Then he hands you the flyers, put them in the toolbox. So. Uh, then he starts telling you about some corporation scientists who he's seen walk through walls. Uh, he's like, almost every night after midnight, he goes up, goes up to that level, level babe. 
I don't know why they named Babe, but hey, and he disappears. He actually has a crate up there so that he can see it. We'll wait some more. Uh, don't know where he goes. A few minutes later, he walks out of a solid metal wall. You wait again. Then he's like, well, I gotta go. Uh, good luck, good hunting. Well, that, that holds it for now. And I'll take the key. So I take the key for the maintenance tray, and we're done here. Uh, so this is level dog. I'm going to go downstairs, and we're going to go to level 10 yet. Uh, it's only 1 o'clock. i got a little bit of time to kill, so I'm going to go up. And you notice there's this guard here. Well, I'm going to go into the room he's guarding. And you notice here, this is where the onboard military forces store their weapons. Um, there's just a gun sitting out. I don't know why there's the gun sitting out, but, you know, we're going to take this gun. Now, normally we could just... You think, oh, take the gun, walk out. No, if you walk out, that guy's going to see you with a gun. He's going to be like, no, 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 you're not allowed to have a gun. Uh, but I have, oh, shoot, I don't think I took the key. So I'm actually going to drop the gun. I'm going to go back and get that key. So I goofed up a little bit. Got to remember to take key. Oh, it says I already have it. Oh, I must have looked at the wrong place. So I will actually just go back in. We'll just take the gun again. Then we'll open, or we'll, yeah, open. There's a vent cover with the key. And then push the button. And then we'll wait. And there's a spider robot. We'll, we'll put the gun in the uh, robot waste box. Uh, and there we go. So the gun's in there. So we're now going to leave. We don't have, no, nah, we're fine. We don't have a gun gonna go up we're gonna kind of go over so one thing to point out is that you have if you miss the uh like the robot will go dump whatever's in the waste bin in the trash in about an hour so you need to get the gun back with key push the button then we wait and hey we, there's our robot friend we take the gun and there's our there's our points close vent it shuts automatically and for right now we don't need the gun for a little while so uh, we'll just put the gun in the floor. Uh, we don't really need the gun right now we will need it later but we don't need it right now um, you know you know there's a royalty flower here well let's let's be nice let's give this rose to the receptionist and hey because it's like it's like you give it give her the flower and she's like thanks you're sweet but I'm not going out with you if that's what you're thinking and then she's like, you know, why don't you take this magazine instead? It'll keep you company. And so it's like, thanks for the rose. I'm not going to date you, but here, have a magazine. Uh, so now, um, at this point, we've done pretty much everything we need to do at this point. Um, I believe it is... I'm, I'm going to actually save because I don't recall. Uh, we'll just name this game high. We'll overwrite the game here. Um, I believe this is the room we, we wait in. Yep. Okay. So we go, everybody, you got a bunch of people that show up. You, you recognize a lot of them from the, from the flight in. Um, almost everybody's a little lost, all that. We'll just wait again and he'll, he'll come in and he's going to start introducing himself. So this is Hector Gomez. Uh, he works for the corporate science station. He's your instructor. He talks about the data man. He actually signed for mission. You'll be able to use your data man to look up references. Uh, he's like, these ships actually are pretty idiot proof. You don't have to worry about it. You just steer yourself, no maintenance. Um, and then he starts walking you through what's in there and the, talks about the corporation. Your eyes begin to glaze over, kind of like a, think of Ben Stein just talking and talking and talking in that monotone. And then he concludes the, concludes the material. You shake your head, you honor, turn your attention. And then he's like, I'll, I'm going to give you flight crew badges. So don't let them out of your sight. Um, on the on the badge, there's a black suit that's computer coded. Code information is actually a list of six course codes the corporation assigned you. So you actually get six course, course codes that you could take out on missions. Um, you can enter anything you want, but you should be you're better off using the ones that are assigned. Um, they do have they have gotten rid of all the course codes that have resulted in known fatalities. So they're not they're, they're just like just use the ones we give you. That's the important part. And he just tells you, sign up to sign up for a mission. Just go down to the hangar with your blue badge. They'll sign you up and enter the course codes and get you get you going. Um, he trades you in. You're now flight crew. Um, now that you've done this, we'll wait. 
We'll wait for the he asks if you want anybody has questions, anything at all. And he's like, we're done. Okay. So now that we're done, now I come down here and we'll just actually go down here. And there's this. Uh, so you notice here, like you just got your blue badge, but he looks at, looks you up. And he's like, no, nope, sorry, you're not you're not in yet. Try again tomorrow. Um, that's just kind of a thing you gotta do. So for right now, you know what? I'm feeling a little thirsty. Let's go to the bar, but I'm just gonna have a seat. And I'm like, you know, my buddy's gonna show up here in a little bit, so I'm just gonna wait a bit. I'm just gonna wait and hang out at the bar for a few hours. So you t so you you wait till 20. And he sits there and goes, um, so he walks over to the counter, sits down on one of the seats. Hey, good to see you. So we wait. Um, we'll take the drink, then drink it. Then drink, drink. So you take the drink. That's where everyone hangs out. You see him for some good action. Um, you gotta check out the roulette wheel. They use a very dense, oversized ball because of the low G environment. Kind of cool. Uh, you start, you get a drink. He's like, hey. <laughs> Uh, he starts. He starts just giving you some uh, some information about the stuff. He tells you what you'll, how, where you'll be spending and stuff. He knows he finishes his drink, tosses it in. Well, you know what? I'm gonna. And so you decide. You know what? You're a nice guy. I'll order you. I'll I'll buy you a drink. And so now we wait. We now wait. And then we. We'll drink, drink, and drink again. And so you do that, and he starts telling you, like, yeah, yeah, we're on the Suicide Squad. We just learned how to push the button, go button, we go out. Odds are not not good. We, we die, like, we, we die a lot. Um, that kind of thing. And then he's like, the green badges are what you want. You've got a blue badge. You really want a green badge, because a green badge is, a, like, some, is, is the primo course codes. These are the ones that, that have a high chance of give, making you money. And so they're like, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like the the carrot on a stick that you get. So we'll just, uh, I was like, the only way is to be sponsored by a corporate, and the process is easy. He's like, who's your rep? Hmm. Oh yeah, uh, she's actually cool. She's actually pretty cool. She's actually kind of, she's actually comes in here for some nights. So we do this, and it's like, I'll give you my copy, man. We'll give it to Terry. She might back you for the program, and he give, he gives you a piece of paper. With that is about that basically is about the Orion program. So we wait again, and she's like Terry usually shows up around 2200 when she comes here. You might want to hang around, just come back later. Um, you know he has been really really nice and uh, talking to us and uh, and everything. I'm gonna buy him another drink, and he nods and appreciates. And he is this is the first time he is truly friendly with you. Uh, so we'll just wait. We'll wait again, and we'll take the drink. Uh, then drink the drink again. So he's like, "Hey, you're not you're not too bad. I'm gonna let you let, let you in stuff." Um, and he's like, "Pick the except champagne. Really weird. Huge artifact, obviously important facility, yeah, almost completely empty." And he's like, "They had searched high and low. They haven't found anything. Uh, they didn't look in the right places." And so he's like, "Terry." Yeah, they, there's there's something those scientists have missed. Those cone heads. They miss something. But you know what? I'm giving you the rumors. I gotta go. Tell you what. I'll go. I'm, there's a dude that's, that's always out here. I'm gonna go get him. Bring him back to you. And so, actually, to, so that, you actually have to buy him two drinks for this to happen. If you don't, you will never meet this guy. And you do need to meet him. So he's like, here's Subar Chameleon. Chameleon kind of fix your... He'll tell you stuff, and now what thing you learn in the uh, in the thing is when somebody new comes sit with you, if they're the ones that kind of invite invited you or whatever, um, it's your responsibility to buy them a drink. So we'll put we'll just put the debit card in the um, panel. We'll buy him a drink, and then we'll wait, and then he starts talking about all the different like. Oh, Chicken Fat Corporation, so they, he's, he's like, you made a mistake. So, we're gonna get, we're actually getting pretty, pretty toasted. 
He's like, ah, I've been nearly killed. I've been out five times and killed. I found but really recovered a box of these discs. He's like holding up the medallion he's wearing around his neck. He's like, all for a lousy 50k. And they think it's some some worthless byproduct. So, yeah. Um, the room seems to be spinning. You have trouble reading vertical. You're drunk. Uh, enjoy it. Uh, you can't win. He's like, ah, that really pisses me off. We're the cannon fodder. They get to hang us out, hang us out, do all the sweat and slaving, and then get everything to their fair hair boys with badges. And he's like, man, this is just not fair at all. But he's like, you know what? I'm going to stop complaining. I'll make you a generous offer. If you can beat me in a trivia game, I'll give you one of these genuine medals. <laughs> eh, change all of them to the game. Breaks the routine. And so he does this, and he gets, he actually plays the game, and he gets seven points. So now we're going to play some old Earth trivia. So you can do history, geography, arts and entertainment, science, engineering, and nature, and games of all kinds. I'm going to do history and geography since that's the one I know. So we come in here, and these are these are different things that are talking about, like election president of the U.S. 96 and stuff. So you have Mar Mario Cuomo, George Bush, Danforth Quayle, and Al Gore. Uh, so obviously we all know in 1996 Bill Clinton was re-elected re president. But in this game... It was Quail. It was Danforth Quail. Dan Quail actually got there. Um, the capital of India before it was moved to Greater Bombay. You have Calcutta, New Delhi, Madras, Bangalore. Uh, it was New Delhi. Uh, so we go in. The use of tactical nuclear weapons for the first time in 60 years turned this otherwise unremarkable regional conflict into a historical watershed. And then, like, the weapons were purchased from a disaffected Soviet army unit soon after the breakup of the USSR. So you have the Vietnam War, the invasion of Kuwait, the War of the Orca between Chile and Argentina, and the second Iran-Iraq War. In this case, it is the second Iran-Iraq War. A lot of this information you can actually learn from the thing. But you got, like, what is the state capital of the U.S. state of Southern California? So the capital of Northern So basically, they're saying that North California broke into two separate states. Northern California is Sacramento. What is the capital of Southern California? Well, in this case, it is San Diego. <laughs> and I'll and I'll play around with people. I'll be able to tell them, like, that's the kind of thing you can do here. But it's like, what was the name of African People's Republic before the first elected black government changed the country's name in the last decade of the 20th century? So you have Zaire, Rhodesia, South Africa, and Mali. I believe it was South Africa. So I'm at five. Nationalism, cosmopolitan, French-speaking city was a three-time capital of a country by the same name, which seceded from Canada in 1995, was re-annexed in 2011, seceded again in 2022, was reintegrated into Canada in 2026, and then seceded for the last time in 2030. So apparently, um, so you got Quebec, Toronto, Manitoba, Edmonton. Uh, cosmopolitan, French-speaking city. Hello, Quebec. That's the answer. So apparently, Quebec was... Uh, with, like seceded from Canada in 95, came back to Canada in 2011, left again in 2022, came back in 2026, and then left again in 2030. I don't know what was going on there, but it is Quebec. <laughs> uh, environmental history. The infamous North American ozone hole appeared some four years after it was predicted by a group of prominent scientists. Here's a serious campaign issue during this U.S. election year. You have 88, 96, 2004, 2008. I believe the answer was 1996. And we can always have fun and play around and you can always uh, try to guess it yourself. So now you have the dinosaurs. <laughs> Number eight, dinosaurs. Who was the last leader of the defunct USSR? Uh, obviously, that was Gorbachev. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Dinosaurs, part two. This region became increasingly important to industrialized nations between 1945 and, and 2020, and then suddenly reverted to third world backwater status in less than five years. Hint, they became dinosaurs because they ran out of them. Uh, this is the Middle East because, obviously, they ran out of oil in 2020, apparently. Uh, not really what happened now, but hey. And then you have the offbeat historical facts. The United Kingdom went to war with what South American country during the early 90s or early 80s? Yeah, Brazil, Peru, Chile, Argentina. I believe the answer is Chile, but I may be wrong. Okay, I was wrong. I, it might be Argentina. But I answered 9 out of 10 questions correctly. So I won the medallion. He's like, I got hundreds of things. They, they never took them away because they think they're worthless. So. So he does this, and you know what? Um, I got a few minutes, so I'm actually, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna meet up with Terry, but I'm gonna come here. And you notice there's the Heechee device here, but there's also a tuning fork. And you know, I really, really like that tuning fork. I don't care so much about the Heechee device, but I really want that tuning fork. But if I take it, so I'll take the tuning fork, and you notice, oh, boom, eh, 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 uh, you're, it's to protect my optical packet system. Put it back, or you're going to be under arrest. 
Well, let's put the tu let's put the tuning fork in the Hichi device. I mean, that's what you do, right? So you stick it in there. You know, I'm gonna put the I'm gonna you know I got this nice little new medallion. I'm gonna put the medallion in the Hichi device. I mean, why not? I mean, there's there's gotta be something there. Hey, yo, sir. Oh, hey, look. It's got you got you know it's the device hums and you have the an image of the tuning fork. Hey, those medallions have a use after all. Well, let's take the hologram and put, take the hologram, put hologram on uh, the pedestal. And they're like, oh, well, there's a little happy music. Oh, thank you for, thank you for putting, the, putting it back. Thank you for cooperating and putting it back. Now we don't have to arrest you. Well, you know what? Let's take the tuning fork, since I don't need it. Since we, we'll need that, too. So we'll take the tuning fork. And now that we've got our, not our, now that we have our tuning fork, I don't know why the tuning fork is so valuable, but you know what? Why not? Uh, you know, let's take a look at this, uh, let's take a look at this memo. So it's all talking about all limited partners, or Orion Special, and it's just like telling you about how this. And then he's like, new face show to Terry. She sometimes hangs out at, at the Blue Hell Bar around 2200. So, you know, 2200 is only about an hour away. You know, let's chill out here for another hour. So we'll just wait. And then she's like, oh, I know you. You look familiar. No, I'm, I'm Terry. Um, so actually, I'm just going to give her. I'm just going to give her the memo. She looks at it, and she's like, she's like, she was like bored, not really interested anymore. You give her the memo, and she goes, okay, you've got my attention. And she's like, okay, you're interested. So he comes over, she, gets, she picks up the glass, and she tells you about the Orion, the Orion uh, program. She's like, I've only sponsored 25 people. And so if that tells you, I've been over, I've been over 300 people, only 25 have gotten it got it. So, she's like, I don't know much. I, look at you. Don't have much to go on. I'll tell you what, you're going to have to do something pretty special. And so, this is what I'm going to tell you. You have to have two missions completed, and you have to have a unique discovery. Something nobody's ever found before. Uh, she's like, what that means for you? Two trips out, you got to you got to show that you brought back something that nobody else has found. And then she's like, okay, but I'm going to give, I'm going to be nice to you. I'm going to give you my phone number. If you, if you do it, call me up kind of thing and she tells she tells you kind of what like her background it's like she used to be a prospector she used to, she used to do, do the the grunt work and then she became a transport pilot did all that she gives you a little bit more info and like they pay well promote fast and they see results and she produces results so that's the kind of thing she'll do that and she's like i gotta go you know, you're lucky. If I spent my, if I spent as much time with you as I spent, if I spent as much time with anybody, everybody as I do with you, I'd get, I wouldn't get anything done. She basically chats with you for ten minutes, gets a drink, chats with you for ten minutes, and then says, "Later." Uh, we'll head back to room because it is now real time for bed. So we're just gonna wait. We're gonna kind of just chill out in our room until so about one in the morning. You have to wait till you start to feel sleepy, and then you go to bed. Go to bed, fall asleep, wake up several hours later. You see everything. Let's just take all. I, as long as you don't go see that guard, you won't get the gun taken away. Excuse me. So we'll go on, and you know what? It's now tomorrow. Let's go check out what's going on. And they're like, oh, hey. Now you can do this. So let's, you got the space suit. You can just get on, just sit on the hatch. You don't even need to do anything. Um, you know, let's just go to the first thing you first thing you see. We'll pick the first thing we see. And now, congratulations, we are on our first mission. Now the hits will come pretty hard and fast here. I like to go through all the missions just to show every show around kind of what like because they all have to give you something here. Uh, so yeah, so here you see a nice little nebula and. It, Gives you a little bit of stuff, and it's like, hey, this is an excellent view of the nebula. You take pictures, you get a few scientific readings, a few hours, you hit the button, you hit the return button to head home. So, that's just a little little background on your mission. 
as you go in. So you took pictures of a nebula. Obviously, that is something that that other people have done. Uh, you just got awarded a mission bangle. You now have a nice little bracelet that's on your wrist because you completed the mission. Congratulations. Well, you know what? I'm going to go on another mission. I could just do this as much as I want. So, um, you know, we'll just go to the next one. Now, keep in mind that these codes are listed. The codes that are listed here, they're the same. If I recall correctly, they're the same codes every game, but they are listed in different orders, I think. I might be wrong on this, but I think they're listed in different orders. Like, they kind of randomize the order. I'm not, don't quote me on that. I'm not certain. But you do this. Oh, no. Hey, look, I found a planet. Well, you know what? I'm going to land on the planet. Now, I'm on the planet, but here's the thing. I'm going to actually examine the control panel because there's something I probably should have shown before. You have a view of the planet, but you have info. And it's like, oh, I've found the seven planet of the Sigma Day and Star System. Planet has no atmosphere. Oh, um, yeah. Well, the planet has no atmosphere, so I probably should put on the spacesuit. If I don't put on the spacesuit and I open that door, I'm dead. And you can do that. Okay, you open that up, you hear a nice little hiss as the air gets drawn out, and we go down. So now you can see we're on, on the planet. Well, you go diff you go different ways. Let's just go north. You know, oh, there's a hole. I want to get in the hole. Well, um, can't go up. Huh. Well, let's go, let's just start heading in a direction. Oh, hey, I can go up now. So I'll go up. And so I kind of walk around. Oh, hey, there's a rock. Let's push the rock. So now that we've pushed Dwayne Johnson off the cliff. <laughs> and we come back to the hole. And oh, hey, look, there's a ramp. There's a pile of rocks. Well, now we can climb up and go in. So now you're inside here and you notice, oh, there's an area opening that appears to the east. Well, it goes away. Well, what do I do? Well, if you, if like, so you could tr trial and error. I mean, you could pick a direction. Or you could pick west. Which is the next door in sequence. Basically, this, that puzzle is... The doors open uh, in a in a clockwise fashion. So it so starts on the east, it'll go to the west, and then northwest, north, northeast, east, and around. And if you miss it, you'll run into a wall. But you notice here, oh hey, there's a there's a metal box. Well, let's take it. I mean, this is kind of cool. Well, you know what? I am going to leave. See, the opening fade opens up, fades away. Well, we're just gonna leave. I think. We're I think we found what we came for. And so we're just going to close the hatch, sit on the capsule. I'm not going to take off the space suit or anything. We're just going to go. And we're going to go home. We're going to return back. Okay. And these things can be better. But, oh, hey, you, you just got 25,000 bucks for finding the artifact. Wow. And then you're brought back. Now, I could go on the other missions. You know what? I got a little bit of time. Let's go in. Let's let's do a couple more missions. Um, you can pick any of them. Uh, the only one... Day in, you do have to go to Day in 7 every time. Well, I'm just going to skip through some of these. Um, coming out of space. Oh, hey, you're going near a black hole. Um... You start freaking out as it starts getting close to that black hole. And you're like, uh, uh, and you hit that return button as fast as you can. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, yeah. So, there's that. We'll, uh, we'll leave the rest of those missions there for now. So, now we'll go up, and we'll go, hey, we'll go here, and we're like, hey, um, you know what? I am actually going to examine this napkin. So this 076342, that's Terry's number. She so we've completed the requirements for her bat for your badge. So let's call her. Um I think I missed Yep, Blind's busy. I screwed up. I I did not I didn't read right. So oh so so, uh, so this is something that I probably should do for me. Um, helps if I find a there. And I'm just going to write this down on a piece of paper so that I don't forget. So that way I can actually just look down. 
Uh, one thing to point out is that if you notice, I can just double click on here and it will on the on the screen. If, the, if there's something on the screen that can be interacted with, you can double click it and it'll do that. But let's place our call. So, um, actually, I goofed up and fat fingered. So now we'll type 076342. So I kind of fish con. Okay, let me check your record. So like, okay, looks good. Come to the bar in half an hour. I'll give you a green badge. Like, oh hey, cool. I'm about to get a promotion. I got 25 grand. Might as well get a promotion. So now I'll just kind of chill at the bar. Wait, wait for Terry. The creator. She's like, congratulations. Good job. You brought results. I like it. I'm sponsoring you. Here you go. At no 900 hours. So looks like we got. We just missed it today. Uh, so now you'll just wait. Like, good job. Way to go. Here's your green badge. I'll just take your blue badge. Here's your green badge. Good luck, kid. And you leave. And she, and you're done. So now, well, it's already past 9 a.m. So we're not going to be able to get the, get the green badge today. So we will just wait. So, uh... So we will wait, and we will sleep. We'll take all. We're woken up. It's eight in the morning. Well, it's eight a.m. We better get, we better hurry and get to class. Well, class happens. It's I love it. When you get your blue badge, you're in a green room. Now that I've got my green badge, I'm gonna get it coded. I'm in a blue room. So now I'm just gonna wait until class starts. Security guard shows up. He's like, "Hey, all right, this is only for the right people. You got a green badge." He shows you wait for his green badge, and he's like, "All right, you're good." And they let you in. So now we have a new exec. We have an executive. We have a dude that's in charge here. So this guy is Leonard Warden. He's the deputy chief of the entire like of the gateway. Um, he runs through. He's like, "Okay, I'm gonna give you the standard speech, and then everyone else, like, just hang in if you've heard it all, and then I'll give out new hand out course codes." So now he starts telling you, "Hey, this is top secret." Um, they're trying to find more more research. They found a breakthrough in understanding stuff. And they came up with some course codes that increase the chances of of actually succeeding. Um, you do all this. He's like, okay, I'm going to give you a course code from the master list. Take a green green badge, run it through the encoder. He gives you. A, he, there's a device in his briefcase, and he runs your badge through. puts puts a course code on. Um, He's like, the codes are classified. Do not let your badge leave your sight. Not that there's any danger of that. And he's like, just, we expect you to use them next time you go out. And then he's like, well, I can put a good word in for these, for the guys that found these. Because they're, um, they're, they had a little setback when five, mi five square miles of their, of their facility in Trenton, New Jersey were vaporized. Because they tried to isolate like, the guidance consistent system elements from the interstellar drive unit. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so basically they're like yeah these guys were trying to isolate the isolate the engine and then the engine just vaporized them so and then they're like okay if you succeed good job and then he's like okay the briefing's over there's no class dismissed or anything but you know what I've got some new codes I'm gonna go on a new mission I'm gonna go sit down on the cabin seat and oh hey I have a new code you see I've got three codes here I've got a new code here I'm gonna go on a new code So, oh, hey, there's a planet. Well, let's look at the info. So it's orbiting spec class G. Planet has toxic atmosphere. So if I get open this thing up and I breathe in the stuff, I'm just going to die. Uh, the surface gravity is 1.7 Gs. And, hey, there's there's a small heat, small concentration of heat metal. Hey, cool. Okay, let's go land. Oh, hey, there's stocks on the ground. Um, Yeah, let's uh, put on the space suit because I don't really want to die here. So we'll head down. And you notice here that, oh, hey, there's there's a path, but there's stuff going on. Okay, so we've got this. Um, so if we go east, oh, hey, we just found an alien race. Oh, shoot. And he chases you back. Like, ah. So let's, let's explore here. Oh, hey, we found this. Well, we go up here. And he goes, oh, hey, there's something there. Wait, I don't have anything that fits in there. Well, fine. I'm going to go back to the boulder. I'm just going to wait here. 
I pick up some stuff in the south. They start moaning. Okay. And now, oh, hey, look, it's the aliens. And they start chanting. Zorf, Garks, Mumble, Neeble, Mutts. Mutts, Mutts, Mutts. But it's like they slide. They, oh, he, look, he found, he's, got, he's got something that fits in that hole. So he slides it in. They start chanting. You start waving the forearms around the screen. Here's some beeps and clicks. And then it just spits it out and slides shut. And it, that's it. Um, apparently we just found, apparently we just found their, uh, like we just found a, a ancient civilization's, uh, stuff. Okay, there's a pile of rocks here, huh? Well, let's look at the pile of rocks. Well, let's wait around. I mean, maybe there's, oh, hey, there's a six-layer salamander. Let's take the salamander. I like taking salamander. So we'll go up here. And you know what? I don't really want to encounter those guys again, so I'm going to wait. I'm just going to wait again. I'm going to wait till I pick up that little morphal whaling to the south. I'm going to wait again, get it again. Now I'm going to go east. Oh, hey. It's out there. Uh, let's go into the chief's hut. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go underneath the hut. I like. I don't want to be caught here, but I want I, I want to see what's going on here. So we've got to wait. And then all of a sudden, oh, hey. I waited. The hut groaned. Something above me groaned. Oh, and then you hear slush it up. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go up here. Oh, hey, floating to the creature's dim cylindrical shape. Well, let's, uh, you know what? I don't think, I don't think that's good for me to stick my hand in. So let's, let's put the salamander in the tank. And then we'll, uh, you know what? I, I think we'll go down. And we'll, let's, let's see what happens. We'll just wait. We'll wait. We'll wait again. Oh no, we just had a, we, something, something screamed. They're screaming, uh-oh, the chief just found out the key's gone. He can't find it. There's a lot of pandemonium. Um, so it looks like they're all running off. So yeah, we just scared the, tree, the tribe off because the, the little cylinder was gone. Oh hey, the cylinder's back in here. It's the nest. Well, you know what, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna take the salamander again, because the salamander's cute. I want a pet. So we're going to go back, and we're going to go... We're going to put this, uh... Okay, so we're going to do this. And now we have another puzzle. Now, this is one of these things. It's not like the others. And so, obviously, four circles out there. So you notice we got two shapes. Oh, well, the circle is still not like all the others. All the others have straight edges. The circle's round, so we pick that. Then you look at all the rest of these, and you go, oh, well, that looks like it can cross. That crosses. That looks like it'll cross. That crosses. These are parallel lines. Okay, that's, that's that. So this next one. Oh, look. The dot is in the middle of everything. So, oh, that one's out there. So let's... Oh, I picked the wrong one. I picked the wrong one. See? So, even I'm not... I must have, uh... I picked the wrong one. But it is those dots. Uh, so you just do this and you can just, you can actually do this four, four, three. So in this particular case, um, maybe it's four. Nope. So maybe, so, so we'll just keep doing this until we, until we get the right solution. Again, it's been a while since I played this, so, um, we're going to go two and then you notice, hey, oh, hey, those, that circle there. Oh, five. Five is the odd one out. Oh, hey, I succeeded. Hey, I, I'm inside. Well, let's take all. Let's take these fans. These fans look working. Now we go up and we look at this device. and Hey, let's just take it. Oh, wait, it's pinned. Well, we just picked up three fans. It looked like they might be able to go in those slots. And we notice all the colors. Oh, red on top, purple, blue, green. Oh, oh. Um... Well, let's put, you know, let's put the blue fan in the red slot. I mean, blue and purple, blue and red make purple. There we go. Oh, hey, it fit. Well, you know what? Let's let's put let's put the yellow fan in the blue slot. Oh, hey, we found the we found the solution. Let's put the red fan in the yellow slot.
Oh, hey. It starts... It, it floats up off the platform and starts spinning all over the place. And so you just pull it out of the air. Well, yay, we just found the machine. Well, let's, uh... Let's take everything. So we take the metal cylinder. I mean, come on. So this is a... It's an adventure game, but it's kind of a role-playing game. You don't ever... You don't ever leave anything alone. Or leave, leave, like, leave anything behind. So we're going to go home. We just we just found a really really cool Heechi device. We're going home. Oh hey, look! Ship returns to the dock and it's like, oh hey, congratulations! I just got fifty thousand bucks for discovering a proto civilization. And then you find the Heechi device, and they give you a cool one point five million dollars for discovering the device. But and everything's taken away for study. Um, we, what's this more? This doesn't happen for missions, right? Oh, hey, congratulations, we just finished part one. Part two is now Other Worlds. So now, we've been sitting and chilling. We just spent the last six weeks since we came back from that previous mission. We've been celebrating, relaxing, recovering. I've spent 30, you, so in six weeks, you've spent $35,000. That is freaking nuts. <laughs> but, you know what? You got a little bit of money. You went a little crazy. Okay. Um, you know, we're going to play some new messages. Oh. Well, um. Okay. Well, apparently. You just got a message from somebody who's unidentified. who's telling you, you need to meet me in the tanning room. Um, and don't tell anybody. Well, um. We'll go over. We'll go over. So it's actually, the tanning room is off to the, off of here. Oh, it's an exclusive club, members only. Well, shoot. How am I going to get through there? Well, there's hap... Now, you wouldn't know this by normal play, okay? But there happens to be a guy up here. And you see, hey, a VR manual, he looks at you, hey. Oh, hey, wow, you're new. Oh, I just installed this new VR. Um, could you help me figure out what the, the, what the bug is in here? Um, and he's like, let's see here. Oh, hey, I've got a membership here for the Pajos Labs. I'm never using it. I never use it, and I'm going to be leaving soon. So, here, I'll tell you what. You break my, you break my v, the VR program, and I'll give you this, uh, I'll give you this membership hit. And he's like, gives you a little bit of details about VR and stuff. You got to know how to break it and overload it and stuff like that. And he's basically t teaching you how to kill a v virtual reality from the inside. Uh, so basically, like things like you got to overload it, you got to have have it do something that will break the program, um, something counterintuitive. And he's like, "There's other stuff in there, but you need to try. You should try beach first. So we'll uh, we'll just look at this, and it's actually on beach. So we'll just get on the couch. We'll put the we'll put the collar on because you have to have the collar on. It's a little tight. It's not very pleasant, but." Excuse me, I did not want to think you want to hear me sneeze. Uh, so in that case, let's just push the button. We'll go in. Oh, hey. We're at the beach. There's a dude. There's a daiquiri. Um, you know, we can take the daiquiri. Drink. You take it, you drink it. And you wait. Uh, okay, give glass to bartender. He does that. Toss the empty glass down the bar. Another drink comes up. You know, he's been here by himself. Maybe he's a little thirsty. Let's take the take the, the daiquiri and then uh, give the daiquiri to the bartender. So he does that. And he's like, you, you give him the you give it to him. He's like, oh thanks. Here, let me get one for you too. And he starts drinking, and he's like, oh, hey, oh, I'm good, whoa. I must make him stronger than I thought. He's like, whoa. And then, he, I, and then he eyes your glass, and he's like, it says try to anticipate what you want another I wonder if he does it. You know what, I'm going to take, I'm going to, you know, I'm. You know, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to give it to him, and he like, gives you another one. Like, thanks, thanks for taking an interest in me. Thanks for giving it to me. And so he does it again, and 
misses. He starts. He's starting to get drunk. Well, you know what? I'm gonna keep doing this. So, because you think, hey, if the bartender's like really super drunk, you wouldn't want to like he'd be behind like he like maybe that'll break the program. So he do that, and he's like, oh, I was hoping you'd do give it to me. Oh, I'm good. I make him good. <laughs> he's like, Ugh. then he's like, then he's like, yeah, there I go. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do it again. Since uh, and then he's like, ah, let me get you another one. <laughs> And because his unsay hand slipped, the drink pauses in front of the beam, and suddenly three drinks appear on the bar. Oh! Um. Whoops. And so he tries that, and he's like, okay. He, he tries to straighten his shirt, and it never, doesn't do that. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again. This seems to be working quite well. And then he drinks it, and and he's out. Um, yeah, the bartender's out. Well, um, so I'll take the daiquiri. You know what? We're gonna put we're gonna put the daiquiri on the scanner. We have been able to before. Okay, so you have to actually put the frosted glass. And. Oh, hey, it starts It starts doing it, and boom, boom, boom. Oh, well, remember that X equals X times two? Well, that's just what happened. Boom, it brought it. Well, let's take the collar off. There are other other things, other VRs on here, um, but I don't really need this. Apparently, you gotta remove the collar. But now, I put on the pin. I am a member now. I don't have. I don't have. I don't have a members or I don't have an everybody's in jacket. I have a members jacket now. So now I'm going to get in here. Oh hey, get in. You're in the lounge. Hey, this is a nice little lounge. Nice bookshelf. Nice stuff. Well, you know, what? I'm gonna go up. Oh hey, there's a tank. Hey, there's a dude there. What's up? Um, music change. Uh oh. Wait. wait. Um. Apparently, this dude is the special assistant to the president of the corporation. He's literally the uh, sec. He's the most. He's like the most powerful man on the station. He's probably the like the the second uh, in command in the entire corporation. So you're like talking to the vice president of the corporation. So we're just gonna wait. And he's like, "Oh wait, hey, what you found is more than just a simple machine." And he's like, "This is actually the most single most important find since they found Gateway." Congratulations, you just found, like, the best thing ever. And he's like, okay, well, after I leave, go to the corporation administrative offices, and they're going to explain the significance of this discovery. Um, and they're going to teach, they're going to brief you on this four-part mission. Apparently, there's a four-part mission now that I'm going to be asked to go on. Um, they can't, what they can't tell you is that they, because they don't know, is that if you, each time you complete part of the mission, you're gonna get five million bucks, and if you complete the job, you get another twenty-five million. Uh, he's like, I apologize, but this has never been authorized before, and we don't want to let it. We don't want it leaking yet. <laughs> and then he's like, All right, wish you luck. If it come, becomes known on Earth, there'll be a massive scale panic. So we never met. So basically, what he just told you is that the uh, the item you found alerted them to a new mission that you need to do. Um, we're actually about to find out. Well, we're actually about to find out what kind of mission. Because the moment you go in here, oh, well, hey, they just pulled you into a room. And now, Leonard Ward, he's like, you have a green badge. You know who I am. And then he's like, this is Young Song, Young Xian Li, science section officer, science section chief. Um, we have a dangerous mission for you. We need you to activate a cloaking device that'll hide us from a race of highly advanced aliens who want to kill you. We want to kill all intelligent life. <laughs> and so he's like, yeah, the discovery you made, what you brought back was a functional computing device. Uh, three fair 
fans were were actually memory storage units, so they apparently held they held data in those in the prayer fans. Um, the computer was called calls itself a savant. It has actually taught the scientists the Hechi language, so they actually now can speak. The, the scientists can now speak Hechi. New submit taught them some basic Hechi math and a little bit of Hechi history. And then last night, last night, it told them about its primary function. Um, they told him why the Hechi went away. Turns out there's another alien race called the Assassin, whom the Hechi call the Assassins. And by the time they fi figured it out, the Assassins have already been destroying intelligent life in the galaxy for a very long time. So the Hechi doesn't know why they do it. They didn't know how to stop them. So, yeah. Turns out the Assassins are still around. And they build a surveillance. So they build a surveillance station that they call the Watchtower, that the Hechi call the Watchtower. Monitors the electromagnetic and faster than light radiation in the galaxy. Basically, when you go to light speed, it measures how much a race is doing it. And when the station detects those eight elevated radiation levels, then the assassins show up and kill off every last trace of the civilization. The Heechee were just getting to that point when they discovered the existence. And so they built a sophisticated cloaking system to hide it, but then to kind of put a blind spot around the watchtower. But then they panic before turning it on. They don't know where they went to, or they, they fled. They have no clue. And they left behind everything. But they panicked and left. But however, they did leave the cloaking system within just a few simple steps being activated. And then they left. They left a savant on a world where they thought an intelligent race would revolve. So they thought LF4, they thought those those creatures to the eyes would have would be advanced would eventually become advanced enough to crack the code and turn on the savant that they'd be able to fly a Hechi ship. Um, you saw how simplistic that puzzle was. I don't think that that race they could have solved the puzzle and that race would have still not been able to do anything. The Hechi were not very bright on this. Uh, so because we found out about it, it's now on us. We're the ones who kind of screwed up. And then they're like, well, because you were the one who found found this thing, and because you 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 found it, we're giving you the job. You're the one who gets to do it. And the savant gives us a complete set of instructions. He's like, okay, here's here's the set of course codes. I hit it a little too fast. Um, you have to fly to the world. You have to find the control room and then activate it. And he's like, okay, there'll be large columns. I have column panel control panels on each control panel. You'll find a knob, a lever, and a button. You gotta turn the knob to turn on the power. You gotta pull the lever to raise the shield generator, and then push the button to turn it on. Uh, they built the control rooms. Anyone can operate them. Shouldn't have any trouble figuring out what to do once you get there. But that's basically what he's saying. Then he pauses. They turn a few dials. They show you a screen. There's a nice little world. This is this is courtesy of the savant. Is a Hechi extrapolation. So this is what the Hechi believe will happen to a planet that the assassins decide to wipe out. Ring of fire surrounds the planet, slowly burning the atmosphere and the crust off the world in a violent display of ultimate power than a black incinerator's life. So basically, they just incinerate all life on the planet. Uh, the price of failure. Powerful incentive to complete the mission, eh? <laughs> so he's like, this is what's going to happen to us if you fail. A little bit incentivized. Now, for some of us, that might be not a bad thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, our families, we have got to get them out of there, but the rest, eh, who knows? Depends on the person. Um, some people are like, yeah, I want to do this for the greater good of mankind. Other people are like, eh, mankind sucks. <laughs> but then he's like, okay, he runs, runs your badge through a quarter, puts the course codes on your badge for, to do that. And then he says straight out, um, don't bring anything back. You'll get paid for this. But don't bring anything back. We do not want to jeopardize the mission by bringing anything back. And then you're done. So now that we've now that we've done this, we found out we found out what our we've got a new mission. Well, you know what? We're gonna go on our mission. Like you know what? We're gonna go save the world. We're gonna do this. We're gonna go to the ship, and we're gonna we're gonna just let's just take off. We're gonna go straight on. So now we have four new course codes. So now we go. We're just going to go to the first planet on the list. And, oh, hey, it's a planet. Of course, we were told it was a planet. Let's look at the info really quick. It's the orbiting planet, Delta RK. Planet has toxic atmosphere. It seems to be like a common thing where they either have no atmosphere or toxic atmosphere, huh? Um, sensors detect large concentrations. So, hey, it's no longer small. It's large. So you find this thing, and hey, well, we know it's not a toxic atmosphere, so let's just open 
the cabin hatch now. Do that. We'll come down. Oh, hey, we're in a, we're in a place. So, um, in standard fashion, we'll take all. So we have a bright cube and a crack prism. Then we come in here. Oh, hey, got, a, got this. Oh, hey, we got we got more stuff to take. So let's just take all. Okay, we so we can't get to the black pyramid because there's a thick pluck there's thick plexiglass right between us. Oh, hey, I've got a clear prism and a dark cube. Ha. Huh. Well, I've got a clear prism, a cracked prism, a dark cube, and a bright cube. I wonder if they mean something. Well, um, in this case, let's put the... Uh, um, one downside is when you start... So, so we'll put in the diamond tray. So we put the clear prism there. And let's put the, uh, you know... This bright cube looks like looks like it's a um, one minute. So we'll just do this. This so way, put bright cube in, and then we'll click on the square socket. Oh hey, I just took the plexiglass. Let's take the black door. Oh, I can't see the budget. Oh, I see there's a little uh, little tray. Well, um, put the cracked prism. Double tray. Oh, there's no room for it. Oh, it's too big. Okay, fine. Uh, it looks like there's nothing I can do here. So I'll just take this all and I'll move. And, uh, you know, you know, it's crack. The crack prism and the dark cube, they just, I'm thinking that they're broken. So, you know, let's just put the clear prism in the diamond tray. Square socket. And now, hey, look. You feel slight vibration beneath your feet on the ground. So let's get on the let's get on the disc. Oh hey, I just got teleported. Wow. Alright, well we're gonna come in here. Oh hey, there's the shield generator. But there's this weird colorful thing around. Huh. Weird. Oh hey, there's beetles around. So let's look at the beetle first. Um they're oval. Oh, hey, there was an oval thing. So let's take the beetle. You know what? Um, I'm going to leave. I'm going to get on the disc. We're going to go back and get that. We're going to we're going to go get that that pyramid because that pyramid seemed to so, so we're just gonna put the so we'll do that and then hey, let's put the beetle in the oval tray. Oh, hey, we put the squirmy insect there, and then all of a sudden it flickers for more, and then there's a click. Well, let's take the black pyramid. Oh, hey. And apparently it's heavier than it looks and it has sharp pointy edges. Well, let's take all. Um, oh, it didn't even try to take the beetle. Uh, if you don't notice, the beetle actually is dead now. You kind of used it. It, it kind of basically, like, uh, zapped it to free the thing. Uh, We'll do that and we'll double click this just to get on the disc. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. So now we're in this area and okay, so well no, let's start going let's go the way we did go before. Oh hey. Well we have different colors. Now this one you kinda have to question what what do you think the solution is? Well, you're in a place that it likes lights and colors, and you notice that there's all sorts of rainbow colors right here, and the room itself has rainbow hues. So maybe the rainbow is the, the answer. Well, it tells you starting from the western wall and proceeding clockwise, you have green, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and a violet, and then this way is back to the way we came. Well, you know what? I'm going to go down the red. And we find a new room, and it's like, oh. So starting from west, you got yellow, red, green, violet, orange, indigo, and blue. Well, we're going to 
gonna go to the orange. We're gonna go to the next color on there. And I have orange, yellow, blue, indigo, red, green, violet. So if if you're not familiar with like if you if you want to take a guess now, I'll give you a moment to think. What's the next color? Yeah. All right. The next one's yellow. Um, so yeah, the solution to this puzzle is a very simple color puzzle. But if you've ever uh, heard the acronym for for the rainbow, as Roy G. Biv. It's a nice little simple puzzle. So the next one, going around, we're gonna go through the green wall, green door. So there's Roy G. Then we want to go west through the blue. Then we want to go south southeast for the indigo, and then violet is straight north. And oh hey, there's a there's a thing. Well, let's put the pyramid. We got something. And oh hey, look, we just we just got that. We're gonna. We're just going to leave. We're just going to go south. And oh, hey, it took us back. Well, let's turn the power knob. Let's pull the deploy lever. Let's push the button. And that is it. That is the first thing. Now we get this thing. This happens several times. Every time you do this. So nothing else happens for a full minute. And the ground beneath your feet begins to shake almost imper imperceptibly. You become aware of a deep rumbling sound. More felt than heard. A dull mechanical thunder that begins to increase rapidly in volume. As the sound reaches the level, it's barely tolerable. The shaking intensifies until you're holding under the control panel before we avoid being thrown to the ground. Then you see this come up and it turns on. I don't know why this doesn't happen until you push the button. Because this is supposed to make the do the extension first and then turns on. And that's like many kilometers away, so long well, long ways away. Ancient machinery built to an inhuman scale grinds alive. Three enormous columns extend from the crest of the planet, reaching for the sky like fingers on a giant hand. They rise until the top of each column is outside the planet's atmosphere. Then the shield generator activates. A ring of violet fire links the three columns and towards a fierce and glowing energy that warps the fabric of space itself. So this is happening outside the atmosphere, even though it looks like it's in the atmosphere. And hey, I've done it. Well, um, I guess we're done. So uh, we're just going to go up. And it's like, oh, oh, yeah, I remember. I forgot. Or I remember what the dude said. Don't bring anything back. So I'm going to drop the cube in the prism up here. I'm just going to leave. Dropping every, dropping the stuff I got here, and I'm leaving, and I'm returning. I'm done. And hey, happy music means we did did something right. We are coming back. And then we were awarded five million bucks for activating the space generator or the shield generator, and we're back to the entrance. And we're gonna just go on the next mission. So you could hang around this gateway and do a few things. You don't really need to. Um, we're gonna go to the next planet. So we went to Aragay Six. So now we're going to continue on to the next planet, and we found this, and the info. So orbiting the third planet of the Kaduna star system, spectral class F, planet has toxic atmosphere. How nice. Thank you, game. Surface gravity and large concentration of metal. So we will just land, and oh, hey, look, there's a little, like, tower and castle thingy in the distance amongst this. And it clears an opening in the jungle below, and then you settle down. Well, let's uh, oh, put on the spacesuit since we got toxic. Uh, then we'll open up the cabin hatch and head down. Oh, hey, look, we're here. We've got the lush undergrowth, your strange chittering, you got this. But we're going to go east. And, oh, there's a lot of dead stuff. And so we're going to go east. Um, we're going to take, you know... Several saw shoots poke up through the ground at my feet. Suddenly, the ground below my feet bursts open, and a huge worm crawls up my legs and rides itself around my torso. And it attaches a sucker mouth to the back of my helmet, so it begins to chew on my headgear. That might be bad, so I think I'm going to take the worm. Um, oh, shoot. There's a giant spider. Um, no, Say no to spiders. Shoot. Spider with gun. Again. Oh. Again. We should blow it away. Oh, it's dead. Oh, shoot. Um, the shoots are starting to grow pseudopods. They're starting to, if I don't, they begin to squeeze. If I don't move, I'm going to get out of here. So I'm going to go west. I'm going to go back and break out. But the spider's dead, so we're going to take all. And, oh, I take the gun. I wade into the pool of, of, of bug guts. 
and it sticks to my spacesuit. I try to wipe it off and only smear on more, and then suddenly my gun is the suit is, gov is covered and stuff. Oh shoot! I've got a worm in my head again. Um, I'm gonna go over here. Um, you know what? I am not gonna. I this worm is bugging me. Hey, there's a tentacle in there. Let's throw the worm in the tentacle. Maybe the tentacle will like the worm. So we'll throw the worm in the swamp. So I throw, I, I rip it off and throw the throw the nematode in there, and it starts grabbing around. Then the tentacle comes out and gets it. And as then all of a sudden, oh, hey, the pterosaur struggles to get airborne. Um. Tentacle emerges from the ooze, winds itself around the bird's leg. Oh shoot! Now we got a battle between between uh, octopus and uh, dragon, or bird, or whatever pterosaur, and the bird wins. And now we have a fully functional dead octopus as a bridge. So we're gonna go here. Um, Spike looks interesting. Okay, so actually, um, yeah, that snake's, oh, I found a snake. I don't want that snake. Um, take the worm, get rid of that. So actually, I forgot to grab one something. It looks like I, there's something I forgot to grab. Um, so actually, I needed a pod from the tree because apparently, um, there's a, like, there's, there's a pod here. Well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to drop the pod. Oh, hey, this giant rat just came out of here. And when it hits the spike ball, like it, it runs out, it darts out of the forest, swallows the pod, but then it's just trying to get away. It rushes up against it, and the spike ball explodes. Well, we're going to take this rat, this dead rat. And then suddenly there's this tongue that comes out of the spike ball plant. Starts to look around, finds nothing, kind of oh, leaves. Um, we're gonna go back over here. Um, we're gonna get throw the rat the snake and then take the worm because we do not want there. Uh, we're, you know what? We need to open the door because I don't. There, it's still there. We're gonna go in. Oh hey, there's a slug on there. Oh, that's a big. That is a big slug now, and it's got sharp fangs. Um, it's hissing and snapping at you. Well, you know what? I have a spike. So we stick it in and it blows up. And there's guts everywhere. Ew. Well, let's do the same thing we did with the other one. Let's go ahead and push push the buttons. And the same thing happens. This is the exact same sequence where it just tells you that, that what happens to the thing. Um, we're just going to skip through that. And we're we're done. We've... we've We've completed this thing. We're going to take everything. We're going to leave. If you, one thing to point out is that some of these, there's a lot of things here that will kill you if you don't uh, do it right. So we're going to go home now. Like if you touch that spike ball, you get killed. Anytime you die, get killed here. You have to either, you can either undo the last action you did, which is as far back as you can go. You can only undo once, uh, like one, one action. It won't undo anymore after that. Or you can save, restore, whatever. Uh, we're going to go south again. We're just going to go back on a mission. Next mission. We're going to get on the in the ship's cabin. And we're going to go to the next, the next place. Okay, new planet. Let's take a look at the info. Oh, orbiting the fifth planet of the side Dorma star system. Spectral Class G planet has breathable atmosphere. Finally, a place we can go to without a spacesuit. Uh, surface gravity is 0.9 Gs. Rotational period is eight hours, huh? So in other words, the, the, the whole planet does it like has a rotation of eight hours. Hey, I can open the cabin. I don't need to put on a spacesuit. Oh look, you notice here that it sits there, the little thing, huh? Well, I'm going to start exploring this place. Um, I'm going to take the stone. There's a large stone. I'm going to take it because it can be useful. Um, I'm going to keep doing stuff. I'm going to take the stone as well. 
because you can always... Oh, hey, look, my score went up. That means that that was important. And then I do this, and I... Oh, hey, I'm slightly sleepy. I've only been awake for ten minutes, but apparently because of the, the planet itself gets dark, apparently somehow because you're on a planet that is uh, more... Um, more of a like of a thing like because it has a, sh uh, a shorter day uh you're sleepy now oh hey there's a huge boulder um i don't think i really want to get in the boulder you can get on there i'm in a pond i'm now i'm now like my coverall is now soaking wet boots are waterlogged i'm now in the pond oh hey i'm in the forest now uh i'm gonna go here oh hey look there's a creature i'm gonna look at the hairy beast you know, there's all there's all sorts of stuff here. I'm gonna take all as well. Um, let's go say hi to the beast. Um, yeah, no, that's bad. He uh, he just uh, said no. So I, you know, I'm a little tired. Let's go to sleep. Let's go take a nap. Uh, it starts to see. It's night. You're floating in the center of a small tranquil body of water. Through the darkness, you can discern a vague gap in a distant shoreline. And after a while, a mild current begins to draw you slowly towards it. As you drift nearer, the current quickens. You try to swim away, but the current suddenly becomes too strong to escape. Your anxiety increases, an undertow develops, and you struggle to stay afloat. The once tranquil dream is now becoming a full-fledged nightmare. Finally, despite your efforts, you are pulled below the surface. Though immersed in the murky water, you see organisms much smaller than yourself caught up in the same deadly current. The creatures each emit a single bright pinprick of light, like fireflies at dusk in the summertime on your distant earth. Suddenly, your outstretched hand encounters a rock anchored to the bottom, and your headlong progress is checked. To your surprise, your vision clears, and you find you can breathe freely. The scene suddenly changes, and you find yourself back on land, collapsed in a wet, exhausted heap. As you begin to rise, you notice a pair of large, hairy feet a few centimeters from your face. You slowly pan up, inspecting the body attached to the feet. The creature is an immense beast with a frightening visage. Its claws are extended and its teeth bared, but instead of attacking you, it stares intently into your eyes, as if trying to communicate with you by thought alone. You sense intense hunger, a hunger stronger than you've ever felt before. Hunger so pronounced has become a desperate madness. The beast is also in a thin air and your heartbeat slows. What a first night on this planet. Um, okay, so I, I said take all... Whenever you say take on, it says please be more specific. There, you've you've picked everything up. So I'm gonna go to the clearing. There's nothing here. I'm gonna go north. I'm gonna go in here. Oh. And uh, yeah, no, he he caught me. So I am going to wait. So he leaves from the northern side, sniffs out, and then he goes to the southeastern. But you know, what? at this point, I am now gonna go in here. I see a wooden bowl, so I want that bowl. So I'm gonna take the bowl, and then I'm gonna leave. Um, I'm going to go back to the west. I do not really want to uh, do it. You know what? Uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to look at this bowl. Um, small branch, the interior gouged out. Uh, there's an oval hole at the bottom. Oh. Um, deep red saints cover the interior bowl. Well, let's put the large stone in the bowl. Uh, it rattles around the bottom. Um... Take it, Lord. Let's put the small stone in the bowl. Oh, hey, it fits. Sweet. Well, I'm going to go around here because I saw some berry bushes. Um, um, so we get the berries. We pick a few of them, let them drop in the bowl. We fill the bowl up. Hey, we got points. That, that must have been important. So we're going to go back. We're going to... We're going to do this. And, you know, I, I think I'm going to wait again. I don't want to run into him. He entered, so we're gonna wait again. He goes to the north side. We're gonna wait, we're gonna keep waiting. Okay, we're gonna sleep because it is nighttime. We're tired, sleepy. Oh, another dream. As in your previous dream, you are floating on a tranquil body of water. Again, you are drawn into the current, and again you are pulled under to see the tiny creature struggling against the deadly vortex. Their fluttering aquatic appendages flail the rushing water, but they are still helpless against the torrent that pulls them toward the gap in the shoreline. Just as you previously sensed hunger for the miserable beast, you now sense terror from the tiny creatures rushing past you. Further, you sense that the desperation is coming from all of them, as if they were collectively transmitting a single emotion. Again, the scene shifts to dry land. Instead of a monster, 
This time you see a young woman with pale countenance and streaming black hair. She smiles faintly at you, but you sense the same desperation that you felt from the small aquatic creatures. Looking around, you notice for the first time that you are in a darkened cavern. The young woman glows with an eerie light that seems to come from within her own body. She slowly raises her arm, and extending the long fingers of her hand, she points deliberately at an indistinct clump high on the wall of the cavern. She stares at you, unblinking, frozen in time and space. You are filled with uncertainties about the meaning of this dream as it fades to wakefulness. This is another clue. So we'll wait. It's on the north, so we're going to wait again, and it's going to go on the southeastern side. We're going to go back. And we, we've got this bowl full of berries. You know, I'm going to drop this bowl. We're going to leave the bowl of berries for the beast. We're going to be nice to him. And then we're going to wait. We're going to go this way. Oh, he's back. We wait. He, oh, he's gone to the north. You know, maybe those berries have distracted him. So we're going to go into the cave. We go in here, and we go, huh. Well, we, there was a dr there, the dream was about this was about a cave. You know, I'm gonna take a take a shard, but I don't think I can quite reach it, so I'm gonna use the branch. And then we're just gonna take the shard since we've made it go to the ground. So now we have it. So I'm gonna go south. Oh, oh, he's grabbing me by the left arm, slamming me head first in the wall. I better get out of here. I better run. Um, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I don't want to go into the pond, because if I go into the pond, I might lose, I might lose stuff. Like, you might drop stuff, and that's not really good. So, let's just wash the shard in the pond. And so we clean it off, and it's done. Oh, hey, I've got something that's there. Well, you know what? I was told about this. I'm gonna go see here. I'm gonna wait here. Oh, hey! You showed him, you sh he's looking at the crystal, and he's, oh, it's transfixed. Well, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to put the vine on the beast, and we're going to go on an adventure. So, I'm going to get up on here. There's only enough room for me, so I let go of the vine and put it down there. But you know what? I brought the beast here. I'm sick of this. I'm done. I'm mad. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm going to throw this shard away. Uh, and Betty, I'm going to throw it in the pond. I don't want this anymore. And I throw it in. It goes plop. And the beast looks at you. Then he gets angry. And he's picking up the boulder. And he's throwing it at you. Um, I think I better leave. And just as I jump into the pond, the rock hits the dike, and it settles snugly in the gap and fix, fixes the damage that was dealt to the pond by your ship. Yes, everything you've seen here up to this point, the reason why you're, you're having these dreams and the whole puzzle you have to do here is because when you landed your ship, you broke open a hole in the, wa in the water, letting the water out, and caused this whole issue. You are the reason why you even had to do this. <laughs> And then, because it's scared and everything, it runs away. It runs around the pond and goes back into the forest and is gone. As you enter the water, an unseen force pulls you toward the bottom, and you soon find yourself suspended in the perfectly calm water just above the pond floor. As in your dreams, you find you can breathe without effort. Hundreds of brightly illuminated creatures spin and dance in complex patterns before you, their movements coordinated in perfect unison. One of the specks in the pattern of light separates from the group and hovers directly in front of your forehead. The speck pulses for a moment, and the familiar voice of the Dorman woman resonates in your mind. We are glad of your work. We are now as we were. We Dormans have lived here since beyond memory. Cut off from external intervention, we have become a self-sufficient collective consciousness. What we think is thought, of, thought by all. What we decide is decided by all. There is no individual. Throughout most of our time here, we were in harmony with a race of intelligent creatures who lived beyond the shore of our pond. We communicated with them in dreams, and we cooperated with each other in, a, in an unbroken peace. Gradually, however, genetic mental defects in the creatures multiplied, rendering the once brilliant species violent and irrational. They began to make war upon one another, and soon only a few survived. The sole remembered member of this species is the beast who lives in the forest cave. Aged and without a family, he lives for years at a time in a semi-incarnate state of sleep, comforted by the images we present to him in his dreams. 
Only when he awakens every few years to feed, he is tormented by the madness of his race. During these few days of agony, there is little we can do to care for him. We thank you for not harming this creature, who we know seems threatening to you. Centuries ago, those whom you call the Hichi came to our world. As they were a gentle people, we assisted them in their work. Now you come in peace to continue that work, and as we help them, so shall we help you. The speck of light rejoins the group, and the pattern of light begins to flow in a new direction. You are pulled along behind them until you come to an underwater passage. There the pattern parts, and you hear the single word, Farewell. Then you are gently propelled through the passage, alone. And we're in the shield generator room. And same old stuff. We turn the power knob, we pull the deploy lever, and then we push the button. And we've completed the next mission. As you can tell, these missions are a little, um, I won't say convoluted, but they're just a little, like, they're just simple. Like, there's some, like, there's some, there's some complexity, a little, little complexities, but most of the time they're just simple. But now we go back in, we're, we're soaking, but, you know, we're done here. We're going to leave. We've turned on the, turn on the generator. We're going to go up and we leave the, so, oh, shoot, we're not supposed to bring anything back. So we leave the large, we leave a rock and a tree branch on the ground. That's it. <coughs> so we're going home. So, oh, hey, sweet. We got another five mil. So we're at 15 million so far. We've made $15 million just doing those three missions. So we've got one left. So we're going to go in. We're going to, we're going to sit down here and we're going to go to this last planet. So we go in and we see this. And we're going to take a look here. Info. Orbiting third planet in the Nemira star system. Tracking class G. Planet has breathable atmosphere. Yay! Another one with breathable atmosphere. Surface gravity is 1.1 G. Sensors detect large concentration of each metal. Sweet. So we come in here and oh hey, look. It looks like we're at uh, Arches. <laughs> hey, we're we're in southern Utah. No a lot no no something about that. I don't I don't know too much. I'm from northern Utah. But uh originally. But oh hey. We're here. Well, I'm gonna go south. Oh, hey, look, I just found, I found a metallic glint in there. Um, I look at it, I don't think I can take it. Uh, no way to reach it, it's just down there. So, okay, well, I'm gonna go west, I'm gonna go to the shaft. Oh, hey, well, let's take all. Oh, I got the rusty pickaxe, but there's nothing else here, huh, okay. Well, let's go the last way. Uh, power rocks are there. Let's look at the power rocks. Oh, hey, it's a cairn. Oh, hey, it's my score went up. Sweet. I'm gonna go down here. Um, okay. So I see Venturi, a fuse cupper, bedister, crane sensor, Doppler antenna. Like, I'm finding all sorts of stuff here. Um, I'm gonna take all. And I take the wooden missile. That's all I can take. So, one thing to point out is this is a wrecked ship. We, this will be very important later. We will come back to this. Uh, I'm gonna go down here. Okay, so there's nothing here. So we'll go south. Oh, nothing here. We're going to go west. Nope, nothing here. Okay, we're going to go to the northwest. Okay, we come here. Trailhead. Oh, hey, there's an old dude here. What's going on? Hey, howdy, stranger. The name's Becker. Rolf Becker. So guess what, folks? We just found Rolf Becker. He's the dude that, that went out and found the stuff and then met the, married that really hot chick, and now he's here. Well, let's greet him. Let's, you know what? He extended his right arm. I'm going to shake his hand, and I'm going to beat him. I'm going to be like, greet him. And so, he's like, ah, maybe you're okay. I kind of had my fill of people, but, which I, I, I sympathize with him. I have my, I've had my fill of people, too. I work in a, I work in a uh, service, in the service industry. I'm, I'm a support specialist. IT support specialist. Hello. Uh, I, I'm sick of people, too. <laughs> uh, but he's like, yeah. So we'll just we'll just let him talk about it. It's like I came here as a young success pilot. Guy tell, tells you his life story. Um, so I'm filling my days. He's like, okay, well, I crash here. I didn't think I was gonna make it home. So he's like, I was lucky. This planet has a breathable atmosphere. And so he's like, been cataloging. He's kind of basically he's he's come to peace. He's been living. He he's. He's peaceful here. He's happy. 
like, well, that's the end of my story. There's a lot of other stuff, but you don't seem to be interested. So, I got some errands to run. I'll catch you later. Come by and we'll, we can talk some more. By the way, take the slow cross bridge. I don't want you to die. <laughs> then he laughs and walks off. Um, you know what? I'm going to read this magazine because I've had it for a while. So, you flip the cover story, we can read. One year before famed prospector Rolf Becker embarked on his ill-fated final mission, he married Adriana Lafour, lauder of Corporation VP Edwin Lafour. Marriage was in trouble within six months when Adriana announced that she was bored with Rolf. Since Becker's disappearance, however, Adriana has gone through a profound change. I had a lot of grown up to do after Rolf left, said Adriana to Ivy. I realized now what I had in it. Adriana continues to live on Gateway, and her offer of $1 million for information or action leading to Becker's safe return still stands. The article continues for several more pages. It seems to contain nothing of else of interest. Oh, hey, we just met Rolf Becker. So if we can find a way to bring him home, you can get another million bucks. So, uh, yeah, so I think maybe we need to do everything we can. Let's see if we can convince this guy to come home. So we're going to we're gonna trail around here. Oh, hey, another another thing rocks. Let's, we got points for the first set of rocks. Let's have more rocks. So we're just going to go around. Oh, hey. I saw a strange, I'm seeing a strange bush. There was another strange bush. Um, I'm gonna use the pickaxe. Okay, uh, dig with pickaxe. And then I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again since I got points the first time. Uh. Oh, hey, look, I got I got a tiny vein of ore. I'm going to take the ore. Hey, I got points. So we'll head up. Okay, we've done everything there. We go south. Nothing there. Um, I'm going to... I don't not want to... I'm going to reach for scratches. Okay, so it looks like I traveled. There's nothing there. Okay, I'm going to go back there. Um, you know, we go this way. Oh, hey. There's that, but, you know, I don't really have anything to use on this. So I'm going to leave. I'm going to go back to where I came from. I'm going to go this way. Oh, nope. Northwest can't go that way. Let's go this way. Oh, hey. I've got this. You know, I'm going to take the metal pail. I'm sorry, Becker, but I'm taking your... I'm taking this pail. It's just shiny in the middle of a bunch of planned stuff. You know, I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to climb the ladder. Um... Okay, so I'm going to take this field notebook. I'm going to open, I'm going to open the drawer, too, because there, there's got to be stuff in the drawer. Oh, hey, extra kinetic calculators and actuary discharger. I better take those. Those seem important. Well, let's head down. I've got an axe. Let's go cut the tree down. Nah. You know, Rolf is very, very kind to stuff. If we cut that tree down, they might get really, he might get really mad. I'd prefer not to. Oh, hey, there's a raft. So we'll look at the raft. It's kind of Oh, hey, another thing of rocks. Let's look at the rocks. Um, so, yeah, we're going to continue to kind of travel, just kind of travel around. Um, obviously, you can kind of go almost any direction here. Just going to kind of go around. You know, I don't really want to break that. If I do that way, then, so those ways are the wrong ways. Um, oh, we got a pterodactyl that's blocking the way. You know what? I've got this whistle. I'm going to blow the whistle. And take the rope. So apparently, because it, I played the shrill note, it thinks that the pterodactyl thinks its babies are screaming, so it uh, it goes back. Okay, so there's nothing else going on here. So. Oh, he's asking if it's a beautiful day. I'm going to say yes. Yeah, life on this planet ain't half bad. Um, you know what? There's a... Let me add... A little fellow back in 93, trapped on cliff, cliff ledge. He was roaring his head off when I got there, but he friended me once I rescued him. Been hanging around ever since. He really likes it up there on that panel. Made a little straw bed for him about a year ago. He's calmed down quite a bit since then. Took me a while to figure out what kind of what he likes to eat. There's this one kind of plant he just gobbles up and he smells it. I grow it in my garden, feed him a little every few days. If he eats more often than that, he balloons up and has a hard time walking around at all. I've named the plant Juby Fruit after a uh, G, I can't remember. I call him Mr. Pookie. Name of the species is Gopharia. Pookie's a real swell pet. Doesn't eat much and only charges now and then. If he gets his dander up, 
messing dudes, get out of the way. He's a little fella, but that nose horn packs a wallop. So, yes, we have Mr. Pookie the dinosaur. How cute. Well, you know what? I actually... He said he had some stuff in his garden. Well, let's go Let's go check it out. You know what? Let's... Let's... Let's take the Jimmy fruits. Okay, let's take the leaves. Okay, so I take some leaves. I'm gonna go back... You know, I'm going to say because there is a chance if this fails that you, you actually lose some points with that curse. So, um, give leaves to Mr. Pookie. Uh, he gives it to him. You give it to him. Uh, take Matt, then drop Matt. And when you, uh, you put it down there and it gets on it, it gets trippy pitifully. It's not happy that it's on the floor, but it, it needs to be there because of this. Um, ask Becker about panel. Um, so he's like, that's that's that funny panel over there, right? Um, I don't really remember much about it. You know, we got some useful stuff from our first meeting here. There's lens, lens cover thing, and the actuator cell in there when I first arrived. Wait a minute, this thing was inside, I think. If you find me some vernacular, I'll give these little drinkies if you want some badly. Um, Give more to Hector. He's like, oh, hey, yeah, this is great. I gotta check this out, make sure it's real. But hey, get, get me, meet me in the garden, I'll, and if it's right, I'll give you this thing. So he gets, sits there at his table. He's like, what took you so long? Hey, here's cover, I promised you. I always keep my word. If I have told you already, leave my gardening pottery stuff alone. <laughs> so he's basically like, leave my stuff alone now. Okay. Well. Um, I'm going to ask Becker about, uh, the, the stand. I use that in my music pursuit. You already use music, are you? Well, yeah, I am. I love music. Surely do miss it. Made a few musical instruments. I've been practicing quite a bit. You play? You know what? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact. You do? Wonderful. I've been looking forward to playing with other musicians. Do you want to play? Oh, yes, I do want to. Great. Holds out the wooden drums. And was less good to make these drums were long dead when I got to them. Figured I might as well put them to good use. Music soothes my soul. Places one of the drums for the use is back down his mattress. We get to tap out the interesting beat. Join in whenever you want. Well, you know what? I'm gonna play the drum. And we just took this drum, we got the score, and we join in. Now, you know what? I'm gonna just wait. We're just playing. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna play until we, we finish our song. Becky, you continue playing, a parrot flies in. Takes a position on the stand and starts squawking in time to Becker's, Becker's beat. You keep going, you keep going. Becker drums his way to a dramatic flourish, concludes to do an impressive solo finale as well. Parrot takes flight and leaves. That's a lot of fun. You aren't half bad either. We'll have to play again sometime. So, uh, yeah, we just we just kind of decided, you know what? We need to have a real jam session. This is going to really connect us to this guy. Um, you know what? Ask him about the raft. He built that raft last year. It didn't work. Um, I was hoping to use it to recover my cane, which I actually dropped over the castle when he was back. I built the raft trying to recover a really great cane I made from one of my ship's struts. As I get older, it's getting difficult to climb without. Would you really help try and get back? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. It's not going to be easy. It might not even work at all without your help. I never get it. You going to help me? Yeah. Great. Okay, so... Oh, there's a tiller here. I forgot to take all here. Rule number one. Take everything. Not nailed down. So we're going to go up here. And we're going to say, Becker, get on raft. Get on raft. Give tiller to Becker. Launch raft. Says we go. Bail water. Bail sailor. Do it again. Let's keep doing it. Let's do it again. Let's keep bailing. We're on there. And the shell here soon runs aground. You pick it up, carry it north. Along the way, he picks up his cane. So he's got his cane back. And bail, Ensign. And then he's doing that. 
And then the and then the waterfall comes off, and you both jump off just in time to avoid going over the waterfall. And then he leaves. And we're gonna get out of here too. There's nothing here to look at. Oh hey, we're at the ship again. Um, I'm gonna actually go back. Oh hey, we're here. Well, you know what? We got this rope. And now I can go east. Oh wait, I took a running jump, swung up. Wow, I'm I'm nuts. Take a running jump, you swing on the rope out and across the deep chasm. You don't swing it out far enough to land on the upside, but you do manage to grab the small glass object, which turns out to be a focal lens. So you've got you now have a lens and you have a, a lens cover. How nice. Maybe we need to have some what we need to put stuff back together, but you know what? We need to go back. I'm trying to think here. Oh, I know what he needs to do. You know, he has been alone for so long. Let's give him let's give him this magazine. He's like, oh thanks! I've been I've been very interested in news from home. Thanks for that. So, you know, we're He's our boy. Uh let's put the lens under the panel. And let's put the put the lens cover under the panel. And we've got we've got some points, but we still haven't done everything yet. We're still missing some stuff. So, you know what? Whoops. We need to go south, south. We're going to go back to the ship. We're gonna, Now it's time to go back to the ship. There's actually other ways to get this, but here's this. This one is probably the hardest puzzle in the game because you don't really, I don't really remember everything there is to do about this. Um, so, we're going to... Um, So take grommets with, oh, I don't have an open, there, so there's actually an open, uh, yep, ope, I did ope. But it's sometimes, sometimes you just need a, uh, the text. Oh, whoops, I don't want text. Um, Um, that's oh, there we go. Thanks. Um, so we do picture. We'll do status. Oh, hey, that's my points. Uh, we do the inventory. Let's do the look. Okay. Okay. So what we want to do is open crib. And we take all. Um, open or take grommets with grommet wrench. And so there's an actuator cylinder. Open cylinder. Unscrew cylinder cap. And there's a field actuator. Okay, so there's a there's a plug with two anodes. So this is where I this is another thing I want to save. So, in this case, we're looking, we're, we're having to have to do some stuff. So, there's there's a pyramid node, there's a tetra node, and there's two clips. Um, I think you, so, I, so I'm trying to remember, I think it's put blue clip on a node. And we hear a pleasing click. That's what we wanted to, that's what I wanted. So there it should be another clip. So put gray clip on tetra node. Okay. says that the actuator cash case to keep a green actuator cord. I actually need that. Okay, I'm gonna save because of this. Okay, that's better start. Don't need that.
Okay, so we, we've already got that. Um, so we... this actuator cell. I think that was the last thing I needed. We'll, we'll know for certain when we get back to Beckers. I'm gonna... Again, this is something I haven't done in a while. Um, so... So yeah, put actuator cell under panel. So really quick, I just want to see something here. I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna... So I'm gonna take the, take the leaves again. I'm gonna... So I'm gonna save. Let's turn knob, pull lever, push button. And I'm gonna do this and I complete the complete the mission. So give leaves to Mr. Okay. He sprawled on the map, so uh you know, we're done here. We've completed everything, we've completed our mission. Um I'm gonna go back here and then he's like, oh hey, it looks like you're getting ready to leave. He's like, I've been doing a lot of thinking. You show me the courtesy of greeting me properly. You avoided killing the harmless pterodactyl. You haven't hurt Mr. Pookie, although he wants his bed moved back. You managed to get your precious lens without harming the elm tree. You're a genius in your assembly of my ship's actuator. You let me read your magazine. You helped me get this cape, and you jammed with me. I think you're a good man, friend. I decided to come back with you to have me. How about a friend? Yeah. Thanks. I'm ready to go when you are. Lead the way. So, yeah, we just convinced Rolf Becker to come back with us. So we go back here, and head up and he's like well yes this is it so long and he's reading stuff reading this magazine we return it back and we're gonna go home and we have not only completed our mission but we just saved rolf becker and so it's like ship returns to your award a five million dollar bonus for x-men shows here you're receiving a million dollar reward for the return of rolf becker and my score went up hey part three end game Oh, hey, we just completed that part. You're met immediately by a serious, serious MP. You're, oh, you're here now. We gotta talk to these guys again. The good news is that you've activated the four shield generations that Hichi told us about. The bad news is there was a fifth component defense system, and we don't know where it is. Oh, great. The shield won't actually work until the fifth component of the cloaking system is activated. This fifth component is the Command and Control Center. We've taken to call it Vertex because it seems to be the focal point of the four energy fields produced by the generators we already turned on. When the Vertex is activated, a series of onboard computers will communicate with the four shield generators and orchestrate the delicate ballet of forces necessary to warp space around the assassin surveillance station and flight bay. Vertex is orbited around the same star as the assassin watchtower. The final step in the shield activation sequence requires traveling to Vertex itself. The Savant did not give us the course code that will take you to the Vertex, but we believe the information may be stored right here on Gateway. We asked the Savant about the Vertex, it prints the course code from Gateway, and then displays a diagram of four circles arrayed around a rectangle. The circles representing the shield generators flare brightly, one at a time, and then the rectangle disappears in the flash of light to reveal a perfect silver sphere. We can't figure it out. Obviously, the silver sphere is the key, but we have no record of finding such an object. We can't initiate a full-scale search for it because it is the assassin's rope. Inevitably get out. 
I'm afraid it's up to you. Just find that spare and bring it here as soon as possible. Go get it, monkey. <laughs> That's basically what saying. You are our dancing monkey. You gotta go get it. So we're leaving. Okay, well, um, you know what? We have, we, you know, we heard about that weird, creepy guy that does stuff. Well, you know what? I'm gonna wait here. Apparently, so we'll, we'll wait. Oh, hey, we just found a rat like man. He hits it, shakes his looks suspiciously. We wait. He parry, parry, this guy apparently is named Perry. He hits the artifact, he looks in, puts the artifact in, helps close. Oh, hey, it looks like, oh, he's dropped a small piece of paper. Well, there's another code, so I'm going to write this down because this seems important. 32313. Okay, well, um, you know what? He hit something, so let's hit the tuning fork. It, it seemed to... Uh... Oh. Um, okay. 32313. Okay, we get in. Oh, hey, it's in. We're going to go in. And then we, as we step through the portal, he swear, you hear a torrent of swear words, and Gordon Perry runs out of there swearing. Huh. Well, apparently... I don't know why he didn't just take this when he thought he had it, but I'm going to take it. We we need to take it. Oh, hey. Let's disperse. Okay. We're, well, we're going to go back in. Oh, whoops. We don't want to go to my quarters. We want to go up here. Have you found it? hand over the sphere and the science chief starts going through and he's like that was it you did it <laughs> it was the location of the vertex and he adds of course because of your success we're we've decided you get to do it <laughs> um one last thing while it's important you do as soon as possible the board's demanded you undergo a psychological evaluation so you gotta you, we gotta make sure you're you're still sane before we let you go so okay well i guess i gotta go get up on here let's turn to psych uh, the password today is Flaky, so we'll uh, do this, we'll turn to Deep Psych, we'll type Flaky, uh, sit on couch, put collar on, push button. Oh, hey. Oh, shoot, we're tied to a demon. Um, well, you know, I think I can, I think I can hit, take my chances. So I'm going to jump over the crack. But I'm just going to... You know what? Um, I don't really want to hit that escape button. But I really need to get to that door. And I don't think I'm going to do it while the demon's there. So I'm just going to wait and try to defend myself. Swing his axe and I duck. And, uh, you know, I'm not... It's totally undefended. I'm not going to attack him. You know what? I think I'm, I'm better than that. Uh, the chasm starts opening. Oh, shoot. Um, I can attack him again. I'm too nice. It's not nine feet across. Um, shoot, we're running out of space. He whips it and misses. Huh, I could kill the demon now, but that doesn't really help me. You know, I'm gonna wait. Oh, it's it's now 12 feet across. The axe slips because it's now... He, he, um, you know what? I'm not gonna attack him. Oh, shoot. He starts clawing the wall. Well, you know what? I'm gonna... You know, maybe if I lift that demon up, he'll, he'll he'll open the door. Oh, hey, look, it does. Goes in, and congratulations, I... I did it! Yay, I'm sane! Um, there is a surface psych that we could do. Um, that would be something that would be fun to do uh, as a separate thing. But uh, So maybe we'll do it, do it after. Uh, so I'll actually save right here because... And actually, you know what? I'm going to actually save and I'm going to create a new file. Uh, do surface. Okay. Do surface. And if it says S or whatever, we'll do that one. But that that's just so that I can uh, remember to come back and do that before the end of this video. 
So we'll go ahead and go west. Oh, shoot, there's nothing there. Well, I completed my surface site, so I guess I'm sane enough to go on this mission, so I'm gonna go through the mission. We're gonna go in, we're gonna turn on, we're gonna send the cabin seat. And we are gone. Okay, well. Oh, we're rocked by a powerful tractor beam. And it's forcibly drawn. And the controls of the ship go dead. I see it stuff. I can't do anything. Info. No information available. Well, I think I better put on my spacesuit because I am not going to open the hatch without a spacesuit. On. Oh, hey, there's atmosphere outside, but, you know, I'm not going to waste my time. Oh, given the comfortable climate and the breathable atmosphere in the satellite, you remove the spacesuit and leave it inside the ship. Oh, how nice. I, I don't have the spacesuit anymore. Okay. Uh, oh, hey, it's oxygen here. Everything's breathing. I'm good. Huh. There's a button. I'm going to push the button. Oh, hey. Well, let's take the ring. Let's take the collar and then put on the collar, I mean. Nothing's been bad there. Okay, let's touch the globe. Oh, hey. I just got zapped. Greetings, visitor. Welcome to the Guardian. Oh, hey. Look, it's a funny-looking triangular dude in the face. And he's spinning. Ooh, get dizzy. I am a Hichi created virtual personality or artificial intelligence program. I am contained in the collar you wear. Please remain in contact with the globe and do not remove the collar while I am talking. We have much to discuss in very little time. You are to be congratulated for completing the shielding sequence. Unfortunately, doing so has created a new difficulty. A living assassin resides inside the watchtower, and by activating the final component of the defense system, you have revealed your presence to him. By now, he will have composed a warning message that will alert his race to the existence of a new intelligent species that must be destroyed. This is precisely what the Heechee were trying to avoid. In our favor, the message cannot be sent until the watchtower achieves another half-orbit around the planet, at which time the transmission path will become clear. This will occur in approximately 23 hours. The collar that you wear contains a program that will alter the content of the warning message to that of a standard all-clear message. It can only do so, however, if it is properly connected to the watchtower system. This is something only a physical being such as yourself can do. The success of this plan relies on one additional step, the elimination of the assassin himself. If he remains alive, he will eventually find a way to inform others of his kind about the existence of humans and the Heechee. If that happens, the destruction of both races will be inevitable. Hence, the assassin must be destroyed. The assassin is not a meat intelligence like you. He is an electronic intelligence, as am I. You could think of him as a sentient computer program that lives inside the circuits of the Watchtower. You cannot destroy the assassin, but I can. It is for this purpose that I was created. At my core, I am a virus program. The plan is simple. A door will open from this room into a travel pod. Go inside. The pod will travel over to the watchtower and attach itself to a special access port on the exterior. You will see a globe similar to the one here, as well as a hatch. While wearing the collar, touch the globe. This will transfer me into the circuits of the watchtower. If all goes well, the hatch will open to reveal an intricate panel with a circular indentation on it. Remove the collar and place it on the panel. The caller's program will modify the alert message. When you have done these things, the controls to your ship will respond to your commands. You will be free to go. I know you are wondering why the Heechee did not carry out this plan themselves. The reason is that when the Heechee built this defense system, they didn't know there was a live assassin in the watchtower. When they learned of its presence, they became afraid that if they tried to kill the sentry and failed, the assassin would send out the warning message that would trigger the annihilation of the Heechee race. That is why they did not activate the system they had so carefully constructed. Instead, they left the system intact, waiting for another race to develop the capabilities necessary to turn it on. That time is now at hand. Good luck. <laughs> so yes, this is a Hichi uh, alien computer program, and he is spinning again. But that is it. Okay, so the blue flock cures got back here. We're going to go east. We're going to go to the travel pod, and we're going to uh, press the pedal, since it is on the floor. We're going to step on it, and you're going to go forward. And now we fly. Through the plate window, you see the planet's surface was by. In just a few minutes, the awesome watchtower comes into view, a moon-sized satellite so large that it actually has a shallow atmosphere. The travel pod continues without hesitation, and approaches a large spire jutting from the watchtower's surface. Not long after, the pod breaks the tent 
brakes and attaches itself to the side of the spire. The north wall dilates open, revealing a small alcove lined with a strange black metal that you've never seen before. To one side of that alcove is a globe, and to the other is a hatch. Well, you know what? I'm going to touch the globe. Uh, with a great deal of apprehension, you lower your hands towards the globe. Upon contact, red fire shoots up your arms. The pain's a unique experience, worse than anything you've ever felt or even imagined. The agony becomes unbearable. Red flames dance in your vision. Just as the red haze threatens to overwhelm you, it disappears. Everything becomes clear, and the pain subsides. The hatch clicks and falls open. You crawl towards the hatch, but instead of the expected wall of metal, it seems to open on a conventional doorway. Beyond the door, you hear music and laughter. You shake your head, but no trace of the headache or fogginess remains. Suddenly, a young woman appears at the hatch opening. She smiles as a new arrival. How wonderful! She sees your collar. Oh, poor dear. Did the Heechee program put you through a great deal of pain? Let me take that. Before you can react, she reaches over and removes the collar from your neck. We all went through the same process. I'll just add it to my collection. She drops a metal ring into a box that contains at least 50 other collars. Just like it. We also can't have lethal weapons floating around. I'm afraid we'll have to take your gun as well. With an apologetic shrug, she gently lifts the gun away with two fingers as if it were a smelly sock. Now come with me, please. She reaches over and takes your hand. As she guides you through the hatch, you are too shocked and mystified to even think of resisting. And now we're in a ballroom. We're in a party. Um, we go through the hatch. Your beautiful young guide notices your puzzled expression. You must be a curious. Allow me to explain. Like you, we are all prospectors here. Through the years, each of us stumbled on these coordinates by accident when we randomly punched in a course code just to see where it would take us. When we arrived, our ships went dead and we were trapped. The Heechi are keeping us here, but no one knows why. The Heechi have made things comfortable for us, however. They've seen to all our needs, including food, drink, and entertainment. You must look around and say for yourself that this truly is a trap, or if it instead is the ultimate reward that every gateway prospect is always hoping to find. She hands you a golden card with credit embossed upon it. Here is your complimentary credit line. Use it at any of the game booths or at the bar. Have fun. And then she walks off. Um, let's examine the credit card. Uh, the amount of data credit accumulated is split. Currently reads zero dollars, huh? I go down. Oh, I can't go. I can't do that. Well, go that way. That just has to close. Looks like I'm stuck. Uh, let's go west. Oh, it's guess you wait. Um, you know, only five bucks a guess. Let's let's put the credit card in. Uh... She's like, I guess I'd have to see you weigh 542 pounds. Oh wait, wait a second. She looks at me and says, I'm 542 pounds. I get on and it stops at 163. Hey, we have a winner! And I get $20 minus $5 charge, so I get 15 bucks, and I now have $15 of credit. Um, I'm sorry. She just guessed I uh, weighed 500 pounds when I'm really a buck 63. That's a little sketchy. I think I'm going to leave. I'm going to go to the ball throw booth. Huh. Gamebot wheels back and forth, barking, everyone's a winner. Wait a second, everyone's a winner? Um... Let's put the credit card in the slot. And then we'll throw the ball. I heave it in the general direction and it changes course in midair and makes a direct hit. 40 bucks minus $5 charge, so I got that. Ha! Huh. That's weird. It kind of veered over and hit it. That's a little sketch too, but you know what? I'm going to try it again. Wait, two in a row? Am I that good? Huh. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do it one more time. Huh. Okay, so I just won three in a row. You did say everyone's a winner. Okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna come over here. Hey, there's a... Okay, well. So I guess I 
guess I get the deal. Oh, wow, I just dealt me a royal flush. And apparently I win. Wow, aces and kings. That's a good hand. Bet. Huh. Let's deal again. Four aces in the ten. Um. I'll bet forty. Ha! Huh, keep winning. You know what? Um. Uh, you know, let's let's wait. Let's let's wait. Let's bet eighty bucks. You know what? I am tired of this thing. I am folding. Wait, how can you fold? You've got to. You can't fold. You I mean you lose. You can't lose. You just can't. Um, yeah. Shoot. Why? I I got sick of this. I decided to fold. Um. Oh. Well, I just uh. Yeah. Tetris of smoke swirl around you. Gradually coalesce into a blazing ball of flame. Through the infernal, you see a demon behemoth sitting on a mammoth throne. The hideous creature drops his gaze to you and favors you with a sardonic grin. Welcome, human, to my domain. I am the keeper of the gate. It is my task and pleasure to preside over your eternal torment. You have stupidly thrown away your chance of virtual pleasure. Now you shall pay with unceasing pain and sorrow. Escape from my realm is impossible. Even your inevitable death will provide no release for it. It will only bring a new cycle of agony and suffering. Four torments shall you have, and four times four ways to die. Even so, you will soon wish for more, and the wish itself will become a torment of its own. I will delay you no longer. Go into my world and taste its fruit. I'm sure you will find it will find you appetizing. So, yeah, so we were actually in a virtual reality where... You were supposed, like, where basically you can't lose. You will win every game, every time, you can't lose. So I'm going to take the sword, but, yeah, there's, there's just stuff here. You know what, I... I oh, hey, I'm on a gauntlet. Okay, well, I'm going to go down. I duck, and demons miss, or trying to throw stuff. Um... So cut that with sword. Again. Take all. Um, I'm gonna head down. I just got hit in the head. Huh. Well, you know what? I'm gonna sack. I'm gonna put the ash in the sack. I'm gonna go back north. I'm in the empty chamber. Um. Sharply just slide through the fleshy part of my leg. Oof. That had to hurt. Oh shoot. I goofed up. I needed I need those ashes again. Oh. 
precious, my precious. <laughs> oh, and now I've just faded out. So, I just last, last, last. I just took the precious. Well, you know what? I am going to come in here and let's put the sack on Hishma. Well, you know what? Well, the Hydra's here. I'm gonna throw a sack of the Hydra. Oh, hey, look. Um, bites of heads, bites of heads start appearing. Um, oh. Looks like I was in another illusion, and this one just got broke because the Hydra as you cut off heads, and two more appear. Well, they keep biting each other off until you get X equals X, X times two. Oh, shoot. Oh, hey, I'm back here. Oh, hey. I placed the color in, no alarm klaxon, nothing's done. Huh, I'm going back. Hey, I'm back here. Wait, I'm partying. Okay, interesting. Well, I, you know what, I'm gonna go back. You know what, I've been partying. We're, we're in the end game, we're done. Let's go ahead and go back to our quarters. We're done. I think it's time to sleep. I'm gonna fall asleep. Okay, I wake up and oh hey, I just got a call. I'm gonna I'm gonna take everything and I'm gonna go I'm gonna check the comp set. Let's play the message. Oh, from the terminal. Wait. The terminal? Okay. Greetings, Seaman. I am the Hichi Virtual Personality Program speaking to you once again. Despite appearances, you have not returned to Gateway. Your body is still in the travel pod outside the Watchtower, and you are in yet another virtual reality created by the Assassin in hopes of delaying your, you long enough to keep you from completing your mission. Before you touch the Assassin's Globe, I used the caller interface to create a doppel of you, an electronic representation of your personality. I embedded myself deep in the subconscious of that doppel, so you would be kind of a Trojan horse that would deliver me into the Watchtower system. When you touched the globe, the assassin scanned your doppel and found what he expected. A meat intelligence. As I hoped, he remained unaware of my hidden presence. After letting you inside, the assassin had access to all your conscious knowledge. He learned of your mission to intercept his warning message, and he decided to keep creating virtual realities to keep you occupied until his message had been sent. However, you succeeded in breaking each reality as he created it. The assassin finally formed this gateway virtual environment. In doing so, he allowed a sleep cycle. And while you were in a dormant state, I was able to surface from your subconscious temporarily and leave you this message. Incidentally, do not worry about the assassin learning about this message. He does not monitor these realities. He creates them and lets them run autonomously. His only alternative would be to enter the realities himself and thereby become subject to their rules. Theoretically, it would then be possible for you to force an encounter with him and perhaps kill him, a risk he cannot afford to take. In creating this gateway reality, the assassin has made a potentially fatal mistake. I have scanned the environment and discovered a virtual reality terminal. One of its programs, Deep Psych, is designed to draw out deep subconscious images and make them real. Here inside the assassin's VR, that program has the power to transfer me from the depths of your subconscious to the fabric of this reality that the assassin is maintaining. Once I am brought into the system, the viral part of my programming can destroy the assassin. Therefore, all you have to do is enter the VR terminal and enter the Deep Psych program as you have done before. If you can do this, then I will do the rest. Good luck. So our goal is to, is to go get the Deep Psych. So, you know, we're going to go up and we're going to see what's going on. Oh, hey, the, dude, the fat dude's gone. Well, he left his manual, so I'm going to take the PR manual. And I'm going to read it. There's a few uh, sentences about each virtual reality program section on Deep Psych. It's printed in red. Activate only by prescription. Password lockout is date dependent and uses the following list. Remainder of the page is empty. Ha! Huh. Well, if you recall earlier, when, I, I don't think I brought this up, but when he gave you the... Uh, um... When he when he gave you the password, he actually had an, like a an ultra red or a, like an ultraviolet light that he used to see stuff. Well, we don't have we can't activate that in here. So you know what? We're gonna go down. I know of another place where there's where they use ultraviolet light. Um, remember that tanning booth that we we talked to the dude in? Let's let's head in there, and we're gonna read the VR manual again. 
So you notice it's daily. So the section of deep slice printed red, we read it. Spiral vapor, hurtful jellopy, saucy, jasmine, flaky damage. Powder. Oh wait, it's July 10th. So it looks like powder is the password. So we're gonna go put powder. And one thing to point out is that that password is dependent on the day. So it could be July 10th. You notice that you notice here a gateway normally July 10th, and it's normally military time, but now it's 8:37 p.m. How nice. So. You know, let's do examine the switch, and it's on deep psych. So type uh, powder, and then. And score just went up by 100, and hey, we just did it. Murky blocks of black and brown begin to coalesce into the familiar walls of the gloomy cavern. Then suddenly, a small pit spinning pyramid of blue slashes across your field of vision. The Hechi virus slices into the darkness, tearing at the fabric of the virtual reality the assassin has been maintaining. Slowly, the mask of darkness peels away, revealing an incredible sight beyond. darkened cityscape spreads out below you, lit only by glowing streams of red light that spread out like an intricate spider's web of evil. At the center of the web looms a dark brooding presence of the assassin itself. The electronic intelligence is every bit as alive as you are. It seems to regard you with an angry malevolence, infuriated that you have invaded this realm. The spinning blue pyramid dives down towards one of the nodes where the streams of red light intersect. It impacts with a flash of intense blue light. Nothing happens for a second, but then you hear a high-pitched whine and the blue begins to spread. It affects more and more of the scene until it reaches up into the assassin itself. Seconds later, the wine turns into a soul-wrenching scream, and the entire scene explodes in a searing flash of pure white light that leaves you blinded. Boom! Silence. Ever so slowly, you begin to recover your senses. The outlines of the Hee travel pod form around you. Your hands are still in the black globe, but now it is cracked and lifeless. The hatch falls open, and you insert the collar into the wall circuitry. It glows a faint blue, and you realize that the assassin's stored warning has been replaced by the all-clear message. The travel pod returns you to the Guardian, where you find that your ship is once again on. You enter the course code for Gateway, and return again to a hero's welcome. Only this time, it's for real. After your debriefing sessions, word of your mission gets out, and you become the toast of not only Gateway, but the entire Earth. You never again meet the mysterious man who offered you the bonus money for completing the missions, but one week after you return, you wake up and discover that overnight your account has been quietly credited $25 million. You've attained the dream of every gateway prospector. You're rich. You're famous. You'll never have to work again. But when the parades stop and the cheering fades and you have time to reflect on your adventures, it occurs to you that the virtual personality talked about the he chi as if they were still alive. Although the Assassin Sentinel is dead, and the Earth is safe for now, the realization slowly sinks in that the Watchtower itself is only an outpost, an active probe sending back daily reports of the most destructive race the universe has ever known. The Assassins are still out there. Somewhere. The end. And now the credits. So, um, you notice that they had different designers and implementers of the different parts. Um, there was some extra design. Uh, done, and there's some produ the producers were the three guys that programmed it. Uh, all the look, you notice that there's a lot of people that actually did the illustrations. There's the guy that does cover art, the box design, production coordination, uh, system architecture, system programming. That was kind of cool. So special cinematic effects and animations, the graphic system development, music composition, Arfing Dog. Got a shout out to Arfing Dog. That's a really cool name. Uh, music system development, ad lib transcription, sound effects, game testing, and then extra testing from other people on the team. Congratulations! I have successfully completed the game, scoring 1,595 out of a total of 1,600 points. So I, I was five points short of a perfect game. And that took me two hours and 30 minutes, roughly. So this has uh, been Frederick Pohl's Gateway. Um, and that's it. The, the game is done. It's over. It's now back to DOS. So uh, thank you for watching. If you, I mean, please like and subscribe. And 
have a great day.